Holy moly! Welcome back to Gamer Tales, episode four. Quatro. I am really excited. Did you hear that tone in the beginning? Mm -hmm. Who's that sitting across from me? This is your boy Steve. Steve, thanks so much for joining me. Brandon, part of the Little Jolly Gamer Show presents RSS feed, talking about... So Gamer Tales is kind of like our spinoff show where we kind of like focus on a particular subject so we can like really hone in on it. And we used to do that on our yeah. old podcast. We just... We ran out of time. Yeah, you know, it's, exactly. those podcasts would run for like two hours at a time, and, and it just got hard to record. So we yeah. we decided to isolate these special episodes. Oh yeah, to just it's so hard gamer to, tales to, to pack a lot of that stuff that you want to talk about in a one episode. So it's better that we do it like this. I, I like yeah, I, I think you're right. I think you're right. Yeah. So if you heard, if you recognize that tone at the beginning of this episode. That is the boot up screen for the Nintendo GameCube. Nintendo We're GameCube. talking about the GameCube. Holy moly, Steve. Yep. I've been thinking about this. We originally planned on uh, recording this episode over a month ago. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't even feel like over a month ago. Life happens. Life happens, you know, but we're here. We're doing it. I'm so excited. I've been thinking about this for so long, dude. Yeah. So what I did was I, uh, I wrote down a, a really cool list of notes, and we're going to kind of do a little hit list. I wrote down some games. I brought the GameCube out. It's right here. Got the GameCube, got some controllers. Opened it. So I actually got the controllers. Hey, let me, let me see Steve, one of them. Steve, I want you to hold on a controller because we're going to talk about it here in, in a minute. I got to do the uh, the um, the legendary GameCube noise, the the Super Smash Bros. Melee noise, though. I love this controller. Oh yeah, dude. I love this. It's like one of the most comfortable. It, listen to that shoulder button. It's so satisfying when you pull it, dude. Well, it, you know, we're we're gonna talk about it. We're yeah, gonna talk we're about, gonna about it. Talk about it. But about it. let's start off by saying that the Nintendo GameCube is part of the sixth generation of consoles, alongside the PlayStation Two, which is a behemoth of a machine that yep. we'll probably talk about on a future we episode. Have, oh yeah, and, and we're gonna have to bring it up a couple. Times yeah, we're gonna we're gonna bring it up. You know, we got to talk about the console right, more. and also right next to uh, so. PS2 was first place. Yep. The original Xbox was second place. And unfortunately, in third place was our favorite purple little lunchbox looking yeah. console, the Nintendo GameCube. Which I, I, I'm going to say this though, Brandon. Uh, I'm going to say this though. I don't think I necessarily agree with that take. Well, it's third place on paper. On paper. And we're, we're, cause I have, we have the we're, we're mind linking yeah. right now. We're mind oh, linking. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, it was released on September 14th, 2001 in Japan and November 18th, 2001. And North America, 2001. Wow, it's 20 years, dude. It's gonna be 20 years old this year. Wow, 20 years ago this thing came out. Yep. Man, I feel old. I mean, 2001 was a crazy year. It really was. Uh, I mean, everything going on. Yeah, I mean, 9/11 mm -hmm. happened that year. Um, 2001 for me, I think I was in. Uh, I don't know what grade. What grade would we have been in? Uh, I would have been in fifth grade because so I, I would have been. 9/11 is what I remember. Yeah, right. Because I was in fourth grade. Was I remember that. Grade, I remember that. We were at Mulberry when it happened. I remember walking into yep. Miss Ferguson's class and not remembering. it. I mean, not knowing what was going on because I didn't. My parents didn't watch the news in the morning. Yeah. I remember walking in and you know, just walking into that mess because they, yeah. they put the TVs on. I'm telling you, and yeah. uh, that was wild. I never knew that they were able to connect to cable news until that day. Because, yeah, because it always seemed like we were like disconnected from the rest of the world. You know, you know, well, we didn't. I mean, they, there was like maybe one classroom that had yeah. a television built into it, yeah, but exactly. they would roll in the AV cart. Yeah, and they rolled in the AV carts, every, and we didn't have school that day. Yeah, like because everybody was like really upset, and I, I was like, "Hey, what's going on?" And and man, that was wild. But what did we even do that day? Did we? Did they have school normal? No, I, I think. I, I mean, remember. we had normal school hours, but we didn't yeah. do anything. Yeah, we were all just kind of taken aback. Like, well, mm. I mean, that's the f first thing and only thing that's ever happened like that. And, yeah. And, you know, on U.S. soil, exactly. So, that yeah. was like, I mean, the last Wild. time, the last time we were attacked on foreign soil was probably like, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I mean, it's it's wild. I'm it, a history it, major. I should know that. That, 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 that never happened. But exactly. You know what? Later that year, we did get a blessing in, the, blessing in, in the, <laughs> the Nintendo GameCube. <laughs> that made up for 9/11. <laughs> no, no, I don't know about that, but. <laughs> Uh, to each their own, I guess. But yeah, uh, uh, this, this is a joke. It's a joke. <laughs> hey, but you know what? Uh, I actually wanted to look this up. There, yeah. Whenever it came out, it had an introductory price. Uh, did you see my notes? I did not see notes. Guess how much the Nintendo GameCube cost when it first came out? Two ninety nine. One ninety nine. Oh so, wow, that's not bad. So I, I meant to look this up beforehand, but I'm gonna get like an inflation. Cost today. Um, 
My internet's going really slow. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's um, probably going to be about 300. So I'm going to choose the year. We're going to go from 2001, 2001 to 2000... 2021. Yeah, so uh, we're going to type in 199. So that would be three hundred seven dollars. Oh, close. And, and I was close. So three oh seven sixty eight. Three hundred seven dollars sixty eight cents by today's standards. Wow. Which is still incredibly cheap, seeing yeah. as the PS five is like about uh, was it five? No, it's four ninety nine for the disc and three ninety nine oh, for the the digital. Yeah, something like that. And then I mean Xbox has a, a similar price point, and then they've got like their their uh, Xbox yeah. S, which the 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 um. The draw to that is it is it's cheap. Yeah, you know, it's a foot in the door, but it, exactly. it's, a, it's, a, it's a weaker console as far as storage, weaker. I mean, storage, and all yeah. that. Um, but no, so that's pretty cheap. Uh, th- that that was one of the big things about the GameCube. You could get them for so cheap. Mm-hmm. And um, it says here, I wrote down the lifespan was from it, from two thousand one to two thousand seven. That's you know pretty lengthy. They're pretty long. And the uh, I mean the the Wii came out in two thousand six. Yeah. Right. So. So they supported it, because I remember when the Wii came out, the, that Twilight Princess launched on the Wii, but came out on the GameCube yeah. at the same time. Yeah, so kind of like ma- what Breath of the Wild did. With the Wii yeah, that makes stuff. sense. That makes sense. Uh, and it had 21.75 million units sold, which is pretty good. Yeah. Technically a commercial failure. Uh, no, no, not a com- I wouldn't call it a commercial not a co- failure. Not a commercial yeah. failure, but in comparison to the rest of the market, yeah. those PS2 numbers are just... I mean, isn't PS2 still the highest selling console of the time? No, I think the Switch dethroned the, the, did it, actually. Did it? Let me see. Um, uh, don't quote me on that. Let me see. Uh, you said fastest or most? No, sold? most sold. Uh, so the GameCube was was unique for a lot of different reasons, right? Um, the sixth generation of consoles wasn't the first generation to use discs. That would be the fifth generation with the PlayStation. But for Nintendo, this was the first uh, generation that they used disc, um, and they use like a proprietary teeny tiny little GameCube disc that we kind of talked about before. I can't remember what episode that was we talked about. Uh, but they were smaller in, in the amount of data that they could yeah. hold, right? So certain games would have multiple discs. For example, Resident Evil 4 had mul- had two discs. Well, the uh, Resident Evil remakes, too. The remakes, and GoldenEye Rogue Agent had two discs. Oh, really? uh, one was for the multiplayer, one was for uh, the single player. Well, that- so they would have to split up things up like yeah. that. But it still would hold its own as far as you mm-hmm. know graphical power and... You, know, you chances were if there was a game on the PS2, it had a port on the GameCube. It might oh, not. Yeah. It, it the 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 degree of how um, how much the, the quality was, uh, if it was good or bad quality port, uh, kind of varied depending from title to title, yeah. right? So like if you played Rogue Agent, it was kind of crummier. If you played um, like what's another like a uh, like a Crash Bandicoot game, it was probably on par with with the PS2. But Resident Evil Four, believe it or not was better on the GameCube. Than it game. was, and we're going to talk about that. Yeah. Uh, we um, One other thing about, since it used the propri- proprietary GameCube discs, mm-hmm. that meant, and this was really the deal breaker, why <laughs> the GameCube performed so poorly, mm-hmm. was that meant you couldn't play DVDs in exactly. it. Exactly. Now, they had like a like a, um, a prototype model of the GameCube that could play DVDs, but I don't think, I don't even sure if it came out in public, yeah. but it was like the Panasonic version, that, yeah. that silver looking one. No, um, sure but that was a big setback for Nintendo yeah. as far as competition, because the PS2 had played DVDs, and the Xbox played DVDs. But the Xbox, you had to have that remote. You had to have the remote, yeah. The PS2, you didn't. No, you could the just PS2, use the controller. you could just use the controller. But, but the Xbox, you literally... It, it was almost as if you were blocked off from ever using it if you didn't have the remote. But if either I remember correctly. Either way, in 2001, um, buying a DVD player was like brand new, right? Oh, yeah. So whenever people were like, hey, I might as well get... It's kind of like when the Blu-ray player came out yeah, with the exactly. PS3. It was like, you might as well just buy this console that plays... That has I the, think they were cheaper than, than uh, it, Blu-ray players it, when they first came it out. It was cheaper, yeah. and you could play games on it, exactly. so it was a win-win. Exactly. Uh, and that was the bad thing about the GameCube. Now, look, listen. Whenever I'm buying a game console, I ain't trying to watch DVDs. Exactly. Right. I'm trying to play games. Trying to, it's just all about the games. I'm trying to play games. It's all and about the games. As you can see on this list of wide rule notebook paper, I yep. wrote down every game I could possibly think of yeah. just off the top of my head. I fill up this whole I did too, thing. but I left mine at home. <laughs> I fill up this whole thing of GameCube games, and we're going to talk about this whole list of games. Oh, yeah, definitely. But, got to. you know, these days, you know, with everything being digital, you, it's a, it's an afterthought that, you know, you're going to buy a game console to, to watch you know, exactly. shows on because you just assume it's going to have that capability. Exactly. Back then, that was the bad thing about the GameCube. But I think 
we, we kind of hinted at it just a, a moment ago. I think that the Nintendo GameCube is one of the most underrated console, if not the most underrated console of that. all time. The GameCube is so good. Oh, yeah. The GameCube, if you think about it, the GameCube is the last Nintendo console to have a uh, entry in a- every main first-party Nintendo franchise. Yep. And nothing, no, none, of, none of them have had it since. Yep. You had two Metroid games. Two Metroid two. games. Two Zelda games. Yep. You had brand new IPs like Pikmin, Chibi yep. Robo, yep. and um, some uh, of Animal Crossing. Exactly. Some of them in Nintendo's favorite IPs came from You had a Mario there. platformer. You yep. had a Luigi game that was totally unique. Was. You had what else, what else, uh, you, there was a Kirby game, albeit it wasn't traditional. Kirby Air Ride. Two Donkey Kong games. Donkey yep. Konga and Jungle Beat, which uh, also not traditional. We're already up to like a dozen games, mm-hmm. and I'm just naming the main, fr- the first party games here. Yeah. It's insane. Smash Bros. Now, we go on we go on, on Smash Bros. for an hour, so we're actually going to do another episode specifically yeah. on Smash Bros. and its, its influence on our lives. Yeah, but I'm glad you did bring up Smash Bros., though, because Smash Bros. really um, contributed to the longevity of this console. I mean, people are still playing GameCube games. Yeah. I mean, they might not be playing GameCube games on a GameCube, because GameCube's, you know, pretty hard to come by, and if you, if you don't have yours... If you don't have your old one, then you know you have to rely on emulators, which we're not endorsing. Wink, wink. But, uh, <laughs> but but in all honesty, though, like you have to think like GameCube produced a lot of quality games, like some of the really best quality, games qu- for real, for real, dude. And so uh, one thing, if you're looking at the front of this GameCube, what do you see right there, Steve? see four slots. I see four controller slots mm-hmm. built into the console. Now, I know the original Xbox also had four, but the PS2 did, the, not. did not. It only had two. Now, you could go purchase a multi-tap for like 40 bucks or so, and you could play games, but if I bought Gauntlet Dark Legacy on GameCube, and I had four controllers, yeah, you know, you, you, could use the, you could use the price of the multi-tap to, to go forward and buy more controllers more already. Yeah, more and more, controllers, and more games. Yeah. Um, two memory card slots, you know, A and B, just like usual. Yep. Um, now, one thing about the memory cards, you know, this is this is the console generation that used memory cards because, of course, whenever you had a disc-based console, you couldn't save it to the disc because you yeah. couldn't rewrite the the genetics of the disc, yeah. essentially, right? So you had to have an external memory source, and that's why they made memory cards, yeah. right? Now, they didn't have to worry about that as much on the 64 because they had the cartridges, yeah. but here they had to make memory cards. Now, I don't know why Nintendo took a step in this weird direction, but they had this weird block system that they used for their memory cards. And it was just strange. I, I mean, you could probably do the math and find out that one block equals so many megabytes. I'm do that right now because I'm curious. <clears throat> um, now, remember, we were dealing with megabytes back then, even kilobytes. You know, we weren't dealing with gigabytes of storage, you know. Yeah, uh, exactly. In fact, Animal Crossing was a game that came with its own memory card because the amount of data that it took to, to keep up with the daily routine of Animal Crossing, it, you needed a whole memory card to dedicate to it. So that game came with a memory card. Uh, and in the memory cards they sold, uh, you know, they didn't hold a lot of data. So you kind of had to pick and choose what you wanted to save to your memory card. Yeah. But they did end up selling those smaller black ones. And then third-party companies like Mad Cats and Game Shark would yeah. sell. Now they we, we they wound would, up getting the same off-brand. They uh, would be Game yeah, they would be cards. highly corruptible because oh, yeah. like every you go save your your Def Jam Five for New York data, yeah. and then it would corrupt on these these off-brand memory yeah. cards. But PlayStation was bad with that too. I do remember. It was. I remember having was. my PlayStation memory cards corrupt a lot. The I third got, parties or the first parties? I don't know. Bro, I, I, never, I never had issues with the first party. I have to look at them. I, uh, I didn't have any third party controllers for my... my I mean, Controllers? Uh, uh, third party memory cards for my PS2. I only had them on the game. Yeah, I don't know if we had any third parties. I, I just... I remember most of my corruptions coming from my PlayStation I, All my corrupted data, I mean... I did have a few that hit me in the gut to this on, day. On, on the GameCube, on the GameCube. I, uh, it was all from that GameShark memory card because yeah. it, it held over a thousand blocks, which was unheard of. Yeah. And the, the catch was that there was a high probability that that would become corrupt at some yeah. point. So the Mad Cats one was... I, it worked. Yeah. It worked. What, what brand was that purple one that we had? Because I had that same one. The was purple... The purple one was Nintendo. That was a Nintendo. No, 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 that big, that big long one, the one that's bigger. I don't think that was a Nintendo one. That had the little tab on the front. I yeah. think that was Nintendo. 
I'm, 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 uh, I don't know. I gotta find. Them. There's <laughs> okay. some. There's some. Don't, don't worry about it. I don't want to make you fish it out. I, 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 I got a bag of memory cards. I know. That's, me somewhere. that's what I was. I, I was gonna. Because because I'm just curious. Because I always thought that was like. Yo, I got it. I got it right you here. You got it. I got it. Hold on. By fishing. the way, while you're I'm fishing, fishing it out. Uh, I, I I pulled up the the blocks. The blocks to megabyte megabytes. So uh, one block is equal to 0.125 megabytes. Ah, makes sense. All right. Well, I got some memory cards in here. Here we go. Here's that purple one. That one? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I'm pretty sure that was a Nintendo made. Product. Interact. Interact. Was that made in partner? Um... Memory card to see what comes up. Maybe not. I mean, because I know the Nintendo ones were the smaller. Yeah, the, the Nintendo ones were a lot smaller. You got Interact. a Nintendo one in that bag somewhere. Interact, you said? Yeah. Oh, wait, look, I just... That's it. Yeah, it's not Nintendo related. You're right, Steve. Yeah, that, that's technically a third-party memory card. Yep. This one, this was my trusty one. That one never failed. On this one, one, yeah, but it didn't hold a lot. But the no, the, the, the Nintendo made ones, the little black ones, did actually hold like 250. Well, they made those specifically for Animal Crossing. Uh, well, they had the black one. The, the, yeah. the one that came from the, for for Animal Crossing. I actually have it right here. It's actually that it's, one's yeah. That's a smaller one. It's it's uh it's. Got 59 blocks, which is just enough to hold Animal Crossing. It's got the little. I was about to say that would, that would take up the whole thing. Um, yeah, Animal dude. Um, yeah, so memory cards. I'm I'm glad. I mean, I love the nostalgia of them, but I'm glad we don't do those anymore. Oh yeah, me too. Uh, and so let's talk about the controller for a second. Mm -hmm. Um, a lot. Of, you either love or hate this controller. I find right. Uh, there's not even one that it, it kind of hits I was both about ways. To say, I, be hard pressed to find somebody who hates it. Well, the thing is about it is that it's uh, not the shape of the controller, mm -hmm. but the buttons are asymmetrical, right? It's the only yeah. it's the only main console yeah. that that to this day I think that has asymmetrical buttons, right? Yeah. Like this big old fat A button in the middle. Mm -hmm. You got the tiny little B button, and then you got the Y. It's like it looks like these amoeba, like these jelly bean yeah. shaped like buttons. I know what you're and about. on this purple controller with these bright with this bright yellow uh, C stick, that's the the right thumb stick. You got the red, the bright red, but it looks like a Fisher Price toy. Pretty much, yeah. And that, that's why nobody took it seriously because it looked like a, a Fisher Price toy. And um, also, the, uh, some some complaints about the controller from me, right? Mm -hmm. The D pad, total crap. Oh, worst D pad. This D pad is bad. Well, maybe not the worst. I don't know what would be the worst. Uh, but this one's pretty bad. It's it's up there. This is a really bad D pad. And then also, there's only one. There's only one shoulder one button, shoulder like button. so. So you got the L and R, right? Yeah. You got the shoulder buttons click, click, that have click, the click. pressure sensitivity, yep. and then you can push it down to a click, so it sounds like. Yep. So you can hear that click whenever you push it all the way down, and then you got the uh, the Z button here, right? Yeah. But there's only one Z button. There's not another Z button on the other side. Yeah. So it just made it awkward whenever you're playing a ported game that's used using R1, L1, L2, R2 yeah. from. Uh, or they're using the triggers from Xbox because you would be missing a button here. Yeah. And to this day, I feel that pain because sometimes I'll plug in my GameCube controller to my Switch port, yeah. my Switch dock, and then I'll try to play something like Mario Kart, which it works fine for that, but if yeah. I'm playing another game that uses, like... Because you can use a GameCube controller for anything. Mm -hmm. You're playing Breath of the Wild, you're missing a button. Yeah. You know? And, and that's an important button, too. And it's just not built for... Yeah. To support that anymore. That's really um, But you know what's something that, uh, that came out um, that was probably one of the best controllers ever made? The wave, the wave bird, the first. That's a Nintendo made product, wireless, right? Yeah, the first, the first wireless controller. I think that's got to be the first one. Uh, it, I'm not sure if it was the first one, but it was amongst the first. Yeah. And now it wasn't standard. You had to buy it. I mean, yeah. it came out later in the GameCube's life cycle, but it had the little receiver port. You plug yeah. in the controller, and then you you, you adjust the channels so they yeah. match. And then you I could, still got mine. I got I got one for that I played for Smash. Still got mine yeah. as well. Uh, I mean, I, I end up using the wired ones nowadays just because, firstly, batteries. Secondly, connection. Yeah, there's uh, I find with the Switch using the WaveBird, there can be a delay sometimes. Yeah, it's uh, I mean, it's older tech. I mean, for, for the time, it was unheard of like I remember going over and playing the wave bird I mean I'd be sitting way in the back of your living room mm -hmm. playing with the wave bird and then you, you know I mean these these, these wires I'm looking at I mean this is like they're a not couple, very long no it's like a couple yeah. feet maybe yeah. like two or three feet not even exactly. uh, so you mean you had to be sitting relatively close to your GameCube and whenever you're playing with four buddies I mean nowadays we love it because you get to sit oh, close yeah. to your buddies but you know back back then if you wanted to not be huddled around the TV yeah. you had to have those wave birds I tell you what though um, I used to love the wave bird because before school I would play my GameCube outside while I wait for the bus, mm -hmm. and I just like open my window and play it through the window. Oh, I was, man. Yeah, 
And then put it in bus, your backpack? The, no, no, I wouldn't put it in my backpack because, you know, Terrebonne Parish was so stupid. If you got caught with that, they took it. Oh, man. Just Lame. Dumb. I know, but um, I would just give it to my papa. I'd say, just okay, take my uh, here, uh, I gotta go. Bus man, here. That's, a, that's, a, that's a big brain gamer move. Big brain gamer move. Uh... Yeah, dude. Uh, so this this game, this GameCube, yeah. this game system supported a lot of accessories, right? We're looking at one right now, the Game Boy Advance Player, which kind of slapped on the bottom of your um, your GameCube. It had like, you know, you can't see it now, but you remember they had all those different slots in the bottom of the GameCube. Yeah, exactly. Before. But you actually literally screw this in mm-hmm. to the bottom, and you can. It's like the Super Game Boy. You yeah. can you can pop a Game Boy Advance game into the player and you put in the disc and you can play Game Boy Advance games on your big TV yeah. with your GameCube controller. It's a funny thing that the, the way that they made this thing because they used like the world's worst screws uh, yeah. and they're stripped. Like mine, I don't yours, Flat yours, yours doesn't look too bad, um, but mine... <coughs> and they're built in too, you can't change them out. Mine those, is stuck forever. Those, mine, those screws are yeah. like, you you can't take them out and put your own screws in. Exactly. Um, my, my, my GameCube is permanently attached to this. Yeah, I, mean, super game. I mean, there's no other way to have your yeah, GameCube anyway. Exactly. Um, but unless you want to play like Fantasy Star Online or something. <laughs> well, well, we, 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 well, we're gonna talk. We're actually, I'm glad you brought that up because um, it did have a broadband adapter that literally no games except for Fantasy Star. Fantasy Star Online and like a couple land games like Mario Kart. And Mario Kirby. Kart did take Sorry, advantage of the land. That's fine. Uh, it, it took it took advantage of the Kirby's land. Air Ride distance. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I literally put here some games like Mario Kart use land yeah. and Fantasy Star was like the only online broadband yeah. adapter using. Uh, game and it had that big old. I mean, it's very rare, but it had that big old keyboard GameCube mm-hmm. controller. You ever seen that thing? Mm-hmm. As a full keyboard on a GameCube, can, like like. Now I'm not talking like one of the little thumb pads like on Xbox. I'm yeah, talking a big a, old a legit keyboard. They made one like that for uh, PlayStation Two. It's insane. I, I want I'm one sorry, of those. PlayStation Two also. I want one of those just to have it. Uh, but we talked about you know the. Uh, the Game Boy Advance player. Mm-hmm. Now, the Game Boy Advance was the handheld at the time that kind of, you know, Nintendo at, at this point, or actually, I'd say even as far back as the Super Nintendo, they kind of like to work those yeah. those their they, handhelds yeah. and their consoles in, in conjunction with each other. Yep. And they did the same thing here with the Game Boy Advance Link cables. Pretty much, yeah. Now, you remember some games like Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles, Chronicles and... Four Swords Adventures. Four Swords Adventures. Wind Waker had the ting, uh, Tingle Tuner mm-hmm. that you could use. And so basically what it did was it, you could plug in your Game Boy Advance into right. a controller slot and it would basically, basically be a second screen experience. Yeah on your Game Boy Advance and you could use it to unlock secrets. And some of it was pretty cool. Yeah, some games it was totally secondary like Wind yeah. Waker but like uh, Crystal Chronicles and uh, Four Swords, Four Swords Adventures, Adventures. Yeah, it, was, it, it was basically for multiplayer. Yeah, it was basically mandatory yeah. uh, to my understanding. For multiplayer at least. Right, right. Because you could still play you could play single player without it but you had to have uh, you had to have the Game Boy Link cable to play multiplayer on it, which I thought it was pretty cool in the ways that they did some of them. Like Four Swords Adventures was pretty cool. Anytime you go into like houses or caves or something, it would, it would, it would shoot it to the would screen. Shoot it to the screen, yeah. And you'd still see what's going on. I like the way that Crystal Chronicles implemented it with like the little secret objectives and stuff, oh, like really? like where you could see something like like you need to carry the chalice the longest, oh. and you wouldn't tell your friends because you get a bonus at the end. Oh, so yeah, like, they like, did do that. I remember yeah, that now. You, you could you could like. It, you weren't working against your friends, but yeah. like, you would volunteer more to carry the chalice so you yeah. could get that bonus. Oh, yeah. It uh, sucked because that was right when you moved when I got it. Because yeah. I, I finally I, got... I remember, dude. I finally got the cable, and then I bought a second cable oh, so I man. could play multiplayer, and then Brandon moved. And it's like, man, I have a really, like, upsetting story I'm going to tell here later. Oh, well, well, uh, but look, let's get through the technical yeah. stuff first. Uh, but I, I mentioned earlier, uh, the GameCube came in a couple different colors. It had the standard launch color purple. Mm-hmm. It also had that bright, like Nickelodeon orange color, yeah. and it had like that bright, shiny silver color. And one thing about There's this, a black I mean, one too. It, and a black one, yes, mm-hmm. right. And they had, uh, I mean, literally, it is a cube. Mm-hmm. It is tiny, super durable. This thing is. <laughs> I remember one time. I can't tell you how many times Brent would yank the controller, and it would it would come out. Oh yeah. I say I say I don't know how many times. I mean, I, I remember it happening a few times. Yeah. It's not like he did it on purpose. Purpose, but I mean, I would do it. Everybody would do it. But you would walk a little too far, and it would. I had it on a shelf, and it would yank, and it would fall. And you can see it's a little, a little scratched a little up, a little scratched up. Yeah. But this thing still works, and yeah. it's actually notable for being the most durable sixth generation console. Yep. They tested. They, people have tested thrown, it multiple times. People have thrown this thing off of a building, and it still works. And it still works. That's, That's insane. PlayStation was like the worst one, wasn't it? Xbox original Xbox. Oh, really? Right? Because it, it would, it's, it would like the faceplate yeah. would break off, and the buttons would break off. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. 
But no, it's pretty durable. And you know something that we, we failed to mention? Look at the back of this thing. What do you got see right there? little handle on it. Got the handle. Yeah, that's the lunchbox design. So nobody, like, everyone's like, why does it have a handle? And to this day, I, I don't really understand. I, I have my theories. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think it was just because it was meant to be, like, a multiplayer. Yeah. Carry it with you. You don't have to worry about putting it in a bag. You just grab the handle. Exactly. And, and walk off with it. And you could just walk down the street with your GameCube yeah. in hand. And you and also it makes for a really good weapon. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> you could sling this thing around. I bet it hurt to get hit by one of them. Gosh. It's, it's a heavy. It's a heavy. It's heavy, yeah. you know. I mean, it, it's got, it's got some weight to it. Oh, yeah. But it's very doable. But it's 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 such a like a, a unique looking console. Yeah, it's one of my favorite looking consoles, and that's something that's really important is. to me. You know, a lot of people they talk about like a PC master race, yada yada yada, and you can build your <laughs> but me. but people build their PCs to look cool nowadays yeah, exactly. with, the, with the colors, the RGB stuff, and all that. Yeah. But like, one thing that's important to me is I li- I really like the way consoles look. Yeah. You know, it, it's something that's completely. Uh, materialistic. It doesn't matter what it looks yeah. like. It matters how it plays. But like the PS5 when it came out, you remember when, like we were waiting to see like like what's this thing gonna look like? What's it gonna look like? Yeah. And you know some people like love it, some people hate it. But the GameCube is just so so cute and adorable. Oh, like, yeah. I can't get over it. Like I love this thing. Uh, the, the the tiny little discs, the the controller, everything about it is just it, it pushes all the right buttons for me. Button. Literally the button, and you hear that click. That man, that power button click is so satisfying. Um, and then also, um, is there anything else technical? Or really, not really, huh? Yeah, not really I'm not gonna go lot. into like specs or anything like that. I looked them up, and they were pretty impressive. I mean, but, um, that's all I can really remember. The from thing that. about it, I, it, it had something in it that was more um, like I think it was the processor or something. It had something that allowed it to make games look better than on PS2. Mm-hmm. And not a lot of games, I mean, if it was a port, it didn't take advantage of it, but games like Resident Evil 4 uh, really took advantage of that. I mean, really, Resident Evil really. 4 got ported from the GameCube to the PS2. It looked worse. It wasn't supposed to be. And they had to the supplement it. They had to supplement it and say, hey, I know it looks worse, but here's some extra game modes. Yeah, exactly. Right? Here's some um, extra game modes and an extra gun. Uh, so... Here's something super important, right? We mm-hmm. talked about the console itself. We talked about the controller. We talked about the the add-ons to yeah. it, right? We gotta talk about the games. Gotta talk about the games. Now this is baby. where oh, it's, I'm, I'm about to freak out. Steve. Yeah. Uh, I wrote down here the notable launch games for the GameCube were, of course, Luigi's Mansion, and a lot of people were upset because it wasn't launching with a Mario game. It was launching with a weird, a weird new. Like totally Mario unique, totally unique Luigi game, and I think that's perfect. Yeah, I think that's awesome. Me too. Um, it came Luigi with, needed some love. It came with Wave Race. Yep. It came with Monkey Ball, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater Three, mm. Rogue Leader. Yeah, that's a good one. And Crazy Taxi were Crazy the notable Taxi. ones. Notable ones. There was more, but those are the notable ones I put on there. Um, and I put on here, read the list of games. <laughs> uh, so let's, that, this is going to be a deep dive. But deep, deep. let's talk about Luigi's Mansion for a let's quick talk second. About it, yeah. um, and and that, what we're going to do is I'm going to go down all these games, this whole list of games, Every and we're just going to do a little quick, you know, the, the ones that are most notable to us, we'll talk we'll give about. Give you a little taste, except, a little, little more. Except for Smash Bros., we'll talk about that some other yeah. time. Um, but Luigi's Mansion, it launched, and Luigi, like, there were games where you play as Luigi, like Mario's Missing. That was a horrible game. Those are all educational games that you play as Luigi. But um, Luigi didn't have his time in the spotlight yet, right? No, not, and, like, not like Mario. Right, and Luigi, like, this was the game that kind of gave him that cowardly little brother yeah. syndrome, right? Uh, now, he had been portrayed kind of cowardly in the Super Mario Brothers Super Show, the cartoon. Yeah. But, I mean, that was, like, back in, like, the late 80s, early 90s, right? It was Mama Luigi. And Mama Luigi. Um, but they kind of took that and finally implemented it into the video games. Now, I don't think Superstar Saga had come out at this point, because that also really touches on that yeah. that personality trait. Um but they, uh, sorry, my dog's freaking out. That's um, okay. I'm good. over here snacking on airheads too. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> uh, but the um, Luigi's Mansion, it was such a unique game. It really was. It, it introduced EGAD, Dr. EGAD. It had a really great soundtrack. Mm-hmm. Uh, and going around this haunted man, it wasn't really a horror game. Yeah. I mean, it was like spooky, yeah. but it wasn't like a scary game. It was so neat playing as Luigi and looking for Mario, having the flashlight, yeah. going in the dark rooms, Mario! stunning the ghost and using the vacuum mm-hmm. to suck him up like totally a Ghostbusters reference. Oh, yeah. He literally has the Poltergust 3000, a vacuum on his back, and you're sucking up ghosts, sucking up the ghost. looking for Mario, and it's a totally 
totally unique game. And you know what? To this day, that game looks really good. Really does, yeah. It looked really good. That's what I really like about most GameCube games, man. They all look really good. You fire up you fire up Luigi's Mansion right now, it really doesn't look like an aged much. Right, I mean, if you have a way to support it in like an HD format, yeah. of course, but like, I mean, if you're playing on the old CRT or something like that, of course. Yeah. You know? But I mean, it's a, it looks like those games have such good textures. And, and Luigi's Mansion was a great a great launch tile because it had the lighting effects. Mm -hmm. They had the shadows where when like the lightning would flash yeah. and it would illuminate a room. And it had like those particle effects, like all those like numbers flying off of the ghosts and stuff. And like they had like the little ice powers. I think you could use. I really like the the spooky atmosphere. Like like okay, I love I love me some horror games too. But like I don't really think that there's enough spooky games. And what I mean yeah. by spooky, like like that, like it's not scary. It's not meant to be scary. But you know, a spooky atmosphere, a spooky atmosphere right? Yeah. Like you play Alien Isolation. That's not even necessarily a spooky atmosphere. We're not going to talk about that. That's just a scary game. <laughs> That's that is that is. Right? That game messed me up. Sorry. So let's go down this. I got the list. Yeah. Now, I'm I'm going to miss games in here. Oh, right? Yeah. I just wrote down everything I could think of until I filled out an entire sheet of paper. Yep. And let me know when you want to stop on one, and we'll talk about and it. And even if we talk about ports, you know, that was a good thing about the GameCube, is that they, they did the ports it very well. It had them, yeah. You know, and that was something that the Wii didn't have. I mean, exactly. it did, but, like, you were playing, like, a wonky waggle version of yeah. the game instead of playing the actual game. Exactly. And I mean, the Wii U... The ports were on level with that. Yeah, when the Wii U came out, the ports were just inferior in every yeah. way possible. Um... Now the Switch has, has remedied that. It's still inferior versions, but they're they're good versions. Yeah, they're, and they're handheld too, so that's always right. That's a perk. That's a perk. Nothing like playing Doom. Oh yeah, Doom twenty sixteen or Doom Eternal. Both of them. You can play both of those on the go. Yep. that's insane. That's crazy. Uh, so here's a list of games. Ready? Yeah. Fire Emblem. <laughs> Fire that's Emblem. That's the first Fire Emblem in, in America, right? First Fire Emblem in America. Yeah. I'm not sure if the Game Boy Advance one came out or not, but you know, uh, Marth and Roy came out on Super Smash Brothers and paved the way to have Fire Emblem games on console for the U.S. market. That was a bold move by Sakurai. Bold move, and it worked. There, and it worked. Totally because, worked. I mean, I mean <coughs> yeah, it was you know it was free marketing practically. You know, I mean, you put Marth and Roy. Who's these guys? And I you know what? Fire Emblem? Now, now we have too many Fire Emblem characters. Way too <laughs> and many. And there's there's. There's tons of fire probably one more. There's uh, let's hope not. There's, <laughs> there's at this at this point in the show they 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 have not announced the last Smash character, Smash Ultimate character. Um, uh, but yeah, though they have they've had so many Fire Emblem games and they're great games. They're mm -hmm. great games. Metal Metal Gear Solid Twin Snakes. Yes, that was a good one. A Metal Gear Solid game, a remake of the first game, one of the best ones yep. in the series on the GameCube. On the GameCube. Uh, it was one and two, wasn't it? No, just one. Oh, I thought it was. It one. was just one. Okay. Uh, Smash Brothers Melee. We're not gonna, no. we're not gonna stick on that one. But all I want to talk about Smash Brothers Melee. That's like one of the first games I saw you guys playing when you mm -hmm. brought that GameCube home. I think you got it for your birthday or for yeah, Christmas. Yeah, that was we we went we actually went over that. Uh, yeah, yeah, we did. We in, did in the first gamer tale. No, second gamer tale. Yeah, I remember going over there. Sleepovers. Seeing, seeing y'all playing on Great Bay yep. and your dad playing as Blue Donkey Kong. Blue Donkey Kong. I remember just seeing those graphics and being blown away. Yeah. I just that nowadays it's laughable, but seeing oh, yeah. how different Donkey Kong looked. In melee version, and that's really helped uh, contribute to the longevity of this thing too. Because I mean, there's still people who swear by melee. There are people who say Dude. that melee is like the best game ever. Dude. I mean, it's it's it, when you look at like fighting tournaments like Evo and stuff like that. Like they have they like still modern play. games. They have like more, more, when, when you don't. They don't have. They might have like the traditional Mortal Kombat and stuff like that. Yeah, but they'll have, it might like, not be Nintendo's official. They, Nintendo might not give them their blessing, but they do play melee, mm -hmm. and it's insane that it, it's still a lot of people prefer day. melee. Uh, we talked about Luigi's Mansion. Luigi's Mansion. Sonic games. Sonic. Sonic Adventure. Sonic Adventure uh, 2 Battle. Um, After the Dreamcast's untimely demise. Sonic Heroes. Yeah. I mean, who... Dude, who... I mean, I know that they were, they were Dreamcast games. Yeah. But they were ported to the GameCube. They look even better. I mean, there was... They're like GameCube a, games to me, to be honest. There was like a Sega renaissance on Pretty the much. GameCube. That yeah. was the first time where Sega was like, hey, we're with Nintendo on this. They even helped develop one of these games we're going to be talking about, F-Zero GX. Yeah. Uh, but who remembers jumping out of that airplane, City Escape, rolling around at the speed of sound? Oh, yeah. Dude. Roll Those iconic tracks, dude. Yeah, I mean, Sonic Adventure 2 is, is like the... the Best worst game I've ever played. Oh yeah, I agree Sonic with that. Heroes, Sonic uh, was Riders on there. I can't remember. There was tons of Sonic games. I just like raising the Chows and the Chow Garden. Yeah. <laughs> yes, the Chow Garden was incredible. That was another one that you could use. Um, Game the Boy, Game Boy Advance. Game Boy Advance. Yeah, Game Boy Advance. yeah, you could use it for the Chow Garden. I forgot Something about like that. that. Yeah. Super Mario Sunshine. Yep. Probably to this day one of my favorite, like top two 
I don't know if it's one or two, but yeah. my favorite Mario platformer. I thought... after, after recently playing Odyssey and Sunshine yeah. back to back, Odyssey is clearly the better. Oh game. yeah, it, uh, it, you know I... it's blemishes show today. <laughs> But you remember playing? I almost broke my switch playing it, Brandon. I you, almost broke my switch playing. You remember playing it. Sunshine, dude? That that's a t- firstly that's a hard game. Yes. That's a tough game. Yes. Do you remember the water effects? Yeah. Running around, cleaning up on great. the mess, jumping in the water, yeah. swimming in the ocean, and I really appreciated Mario Sunshine because you really felt like you were in this interconnected world. Mario on vacation, getting accused of being this like this. Um, like criminals going around and graffiti artists gra- yeah graffiti yeah. artists and you're going around cleaning everything up and as you collect the shine sprites it gets brighter and brighter yeah and I just remember those water effects man I remember mm. the lava effect that is a good game mm-hmm. that is a really good game IGN must have really liked that game because all that water <laughs> there was a Mario Tennis game Mario Tennis yeah Mario well, Tennis which one, which one was that uh, I don't know. It's over there. Some I don't think I have Mario Tennis. No, I do. Mario Power Tennis, right there. Mario Power Tennis, yeah. F Zero GX. Yep. F Zero GX. That is the the last F Zero game we ever got. Probably Has one of the best st- ones too. It's really hard. It's yeah. really good. It's it looks amazing. Runs at 60 FPS. Has widescreen support. I'm pretty sure. Mm-hmm. That game looks phenomenal. It phenomenal. plays phenomenal. Yep. Like, all your favorite F-Zero characters are back, and they all look amazing. And that soundtrack is banging, dude! That soundtrack is really good. I've probably been playing it a lot this whole time. Uh, it's really, really I really good. like that Death... Was it Death... Uh, Death something? Death Born theme. Death Born theme, theme yeah. Every single pilot in the game <laughs> had their own theme song, and they were yep. all, like, totally cheesy, but bangers, I love them. Bangers, dude. They were I all love, bangers. They are. Care. They're bangers, dude. Those are some bangers. Uh, and we talked about it on the last episode of Gamer Tales with uh, Pinocchio's Pizza Playhouse... Uh, if you haven't heard that episode, go listen to it. We talk yeah. about arcade games because F Zero GX had an arcade counterpart, yeah. F Zero AX, AX, and you could bring your ga- your GameCube memory card and get special parts and pilots. Plug that thing in there, yeah. Totally cool, dude. Woo, man! There's a lot of good games <laughs> on the GameCube. Mario Kart Double Dash. Mario Kart Double Dash. That's one of my favorite ones, dude. Low key, the best Mario Kart game. You want to talk about some bangers and the soundtrack? <clears throat> Man, that that Rainbow Road, I still Rainbow give Road, uh, Sherbet Land, Sherbet Land, dude, one of the best Mario has not been back since this game. The best Mario Kart track of all time, DK Mountain. Oh yeah, that's my mountain. That's my mountain. That's my mountain. That's my mountain. That's my dude, mountain. <laughs> totally great levels, and then the just the double system of being able to. Pick, what made him want to do that? Is it just it was random? Well, it was it was the four player control. Being able to have you know you can play. Four players, each person with their yeah. own carts and characters, or we could play two people per cart and then do two player, like a two, a two split screen, yeah, two, two players two. on each yeah. side. It was totally cool because it would totally change. Like you could change drivers on on the fly. So if you were like Brandon, uh, I want to do the gunning because I'm not good at this level. We swap. Yep. You know, I can throw my item back to you, and it it's totally unique. And they haven't done it since. Yeah. And it's been my favorite system. Uh, for a Mario Kart game, because if you picked two light characters, you got to choose from the light carts. If you had a medium character, basically it always defaulted to whatever heaviest character you had, that's the carts you could pick from. So if you had a light character in Bowser, you were getting a heavy cart, yeah. right? And it was so cool. The cart design was great. The, the, the level design was great. The track design. Uh, and the characters, man. Oh, yeah. Uh, each character had their own special ability, and that wasn't brought back ever I since I wish they'd either. bring that back. That was really cool. I liked Dude, that if one. you wanted to win, you picked you picked um, uh, one of the Bowser characters, Bowser or Bowser Jr., and you picked a DK character yeah. because you had the big bananas and the big shells, and you could get them while you're in first place. Yeah. And, dude, it, w- it just changed the dynamic. It gave you a reason to pick different characters. Exactly. Uh, Mario Kart Double Dash, dude. Incredible so game. So good. So good. Metroid Prime 1 and 2. Dude, those games. Home console Metroid games. First person shooter. First time that they went first person. First time that they went first person. Both those games were incredible. Incredible. Um, and, and absolutely incredible soundtracks. Oh, yeah, dude. The, the Dude, do you remember the graphics walking in? And, like, whenever you'd walk under a waterfall, Samus's visor like would... Reflection. It, it, it would reflect yeah. into the condensation. Yeah. Or, like, whenever you were in an ice place, it would kind of ice over yeah. a little bit. And then you had to mash a button to yeah. break out. Um, and and it, it kept up that isolated, creepy feel of a Metro game in a 3D space. And yeah. I don't know how they did it, but they nailed it. They nailed it. Being able to shoot the they doors, open them up. nailed it. Grappling hook, morph ball... Yeah. Yeah, um, all of it. You eventually get the wall jump and the screw attack, I think. I'm uh, not sure screw attack's in two. That's in two? Yeah. Uh, and in two, you had that light and dark motif and a brand new story about Metroid Prime, yeah. right? And there's a reason it's called Metroid Prime. 
Um, that was an incredible, go- incredible game. I remember playing that for the first time, just being oh, absolutely so blown. Good, so good. And I so wish, good. I wish they would re-release it on the Switch. I'd buy it in a heartbeat. The trilogy pack, yeah, I'd buy it in a heartbeat. Yeah. You can buy the trilogy pack on the Wii U. The Wii U is the best place to play Metroid games. I'm telling you, it's unfortunate, but you can play like all of them on the Metroid Wii U, Fusion, huh? Zero Mission, the trilogy pack. It's all on. I think even Super Metroid is on there. And other M. Maybe <laughs> it might be. I'm joking, I'm joking. If, if it's not, then you can. It's backwards compatible. Other other M is garbage. That's the, that's the uh, joke. I, I, was, I was hoping you're gonna be like you'd be like that's not retro. No, game. no, I have reached, no, don't play that that's game. Not that's a bad game. Uh, I put Ty the Tasmanian Tiger. That is a um, a platformer, a third party platformer that was on the GameCube, and that was a good game. Yeah, was it um, a port or was it? Um, it was a port. I mean, it was on yeah. it was on all the other ones. Crash Bandicoot games were on here. Paper Mario and the Thousand Year Door. That's you know that's that was one that got away from me. Yo, you gotta play that. I game. I gotta play it. I know. It's basically everything Paper Mario One was, but better. Yeah. And that's one of those games like ran at sixty FPS. Looks incredible. I know. I know it's Paper Mario. I don't but know why. I never it it, it I looks so good. And you know what? The the thing my biggest complaint about Paper Mario One was that it was the, the standard Bowser kidnap Peach. We gotta go yeah. save her. Paper Mario and the Thousand Year Door has a totally unique unique brand new story and it's not just mario going to save the princess it's you know i don't want to spoil it but it has like kind of a twist in the end you never would have thought would have happened totally cool man that game is incredible i i i, I could just gush about that really now. real great but we real got great. a list to real go great down. real real great brand. ssx ssx tricky oh yeah i was like the, i was like the, the snowboard, snowboard games game. the yeah, ssx yeah, yeah. games those are on there and they look phenomenal look really good pikmin we talked about pikmin pikmin made was born on the gamecube I mean, I'm not the biggest Pikmin fan, but if you are, you have the GameCube yeah. to thank for that. Yeah. Kirby's Air Ride, we talked about a, it a little bit. That is a really good game. It's not your traditional Kirby game, but it's a really good multiplayer party oh, game. Oh, yeah. And that's kind of the thing about the GameCube, was it was a party game machine. But I'm okay with that, because party games are fun. Because I'm, I'm going to talk about my next game here. Uh, actually, I'm, I put WW, I thought that was WarioWare. That's Wind Waker, dog. Legend of Zelda Wind Waker. Dude, Wind Waker's one of the best Zelda games. I don't even care. You can fight me if you disagree. Do you remember when they first showed Wind Waker and everybody was like, wow, this game looks stupid. Looks like I was a, like that at first. It looks like a baby's game. It looks like a cartoon. I mean, it caught me off guard. It didn't. I wasn't not excited for it. Yeah. It was just a, an artistic choice because I. the reason a lot of people were upset is because they had that Space World demo. It was in 3D. It was a Link fighting Ganondorf. Yeah. People, people got to understand that tech demos are just that. They're tech demos. They're to show off the system. And you know what? They're hardly ever done to show off an actual game. I mean, it's... It, I think like, remember, the, remember the PS3 Final yeah, Fantasy VII I think that's demo? the only time that we ever got an actual game out of a tech demo was Final Fantasy VII Remake. I mean, I think that was just going to happen anyway, but I think that was just a tease. Yeah, I think... I think, I think they actually talked about it. Whenever they, they, they did that demo, they were like, oh, man. Like, from the response, they were I like, think that's what, we, th- we gotta make this. Yeah, I and, think that's... Because I heard in an interview, uh, they were talking about it. They are like, hey, look, we're not getting any younger. We want the original team to do it. So that's yeah. when they started. Yeah. Um, but no, dude, Wind Waker is, like you said, one of the best and one of the more unique Zelda games coming off of... Um, They're the best final boss battle of all dude, of them. Incredible, incredible boss all battles. I mean, they were... A lot of people complain about, well, the Great Sea, you're just sailing half the time. And they remedied that by giving you the fast sail in the, uh, the Wii U version. Like, because you could go kind of faster. That's, that's but at I the mean, same I like time, that. I'll, here's what I'll say. Was Hyrule Field any better? Exactly. I mean, you called in Epona once you got Epona, and you could ride a little bit faster. But until then, what did you do? You just did that stupid little roll. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you just, yeah, you just went all the way through Hyrule yeah. Field. There was nothing going exactly. on in there, but there was stuff going on in the Great Sea. Yeah, every time you get caught up in a cyclone, you have to fight a boss, or those you know enemies would pop up. Those big Sergeant Cortez things we call them. I forget what they're really called. Ah, uh, yeah. But they had the uh, yeah, the Octoroks that'd come after you. And then the yeah, big, and, the and big Octo. And you could use your cannon, and you could use your bow and arrow. And then it, the mystery of having this big map, and you could chart it out by by throwing the fish bait in yep. and getting a hoy, small fry. And, <laughs> and he would, uh, he would, you know, chart out your map, and you find all these different places, and you, you might not be able to traverse them yet because you haven't got yep. the item from a dungeon, and yep. so you, you would make a mental note, and like oh, I'm gonna come back over here, yeah. but I clearly need fire arrows or iron boots for this. Yep. Um, I thought it was a totally unique system, Dude, and they introduced the Rito. They introduced um, Beetle. Beetle, who has come back, ah! who has yeah, who has come back in in Breath of the Wild. Yeah. 
Uh, he's, been, he's been he's been in every Zelda game since. No, not every. Was he in Twilight Princess? No, I don't think he was in Twilight Princess. He came back for Skyward Sword, and then he was in yeah, Breath it, of the Wild. Yeah, and he was in the DS games, I believe, as well. But you know what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was. This this was the birthplace of Toon Link, who Toon showed Link. up in Super Smash Brothers Brawl on the next and Smash been Brothers here, game. Been here and, ever and since. Been there ever since. And a totally unique story with you know Tetra the pirate, who mm-hmm. you know might have something later to reveal. I don't want to spoil all of it. But it's just a totally unique take, and we haven't seen anything like it since, as far as uh, you know, the Toon Link mm-hmm. saga, right? We got yeah, we got Toon Link saga. we got um, those DS games, which I'm not a big fan of. Not really. Um, and then they had I'd the, like to try. They had the 3DS uh, games yeah. where they kind of uh, they did the uh, Triforce Heroes mm-hmm. that had Toon Link, and it really wasn't that great. Uh, but Legend of Zelda Wind Waker, and then Twilight Princess. Yeah. Twilight Princess came out on the GameCube. It was supposed to be on the GameCube, mm-hmm. and they, en- they ended up making it a launch title for the Wii, but it, it did come out on the GameCube, and yeah. it's really freaking good, dude. It was really good. A lot of people uh, hate on Twilight Princess because they're like, oh, it's edgy because you get to play as a wolf, and yada, yada, yada. And, and that's what made it good. The best look, Zelda games are the darker look, ones. Look, I'm, I'm going to say something kind of controversial. You ready? Uh-huh. I think, I think um, Twilight Princess is just a better Ocarina of Time. And, and not every that way. Contra- that is controversial. Not every way. But Very if you think about it, there's a water temple. Mm. It has a better it has a better fishing hole. Yeah. I mean, it's basically, it plays the same. Yeah. It, it's just... It, you can from, tell us what they were trying from, to do. I'm, when I say that, I'm, I'm not saying, like, uh, design-wise. Mm-hmm. I'm saying from a technical standpoint. Yeah, you can tell us what they were trying to do with it. I mean, it has your Z-targeting with more moves instead yeah. of just flailing around. It has a couple different weapons you can use. The armor system, they try to do something different with it by making the Zora armor weak to fire, and it actually increases your swimming. Mm-hmm. Better underwater controls. Oh, yeah. Am I right? Way, way better. Am I right? Uh, the, the, Zora, the Zora's armor actually just lets you straight up swim, and we haven't mm-hmm. seen that since. Yeah. We haven't seen that. That's not even in Breath of the Wild. You can actually dive underwater and swim freely. You didn't have to just use the iron boots to go up and down, Yeah. Uh, which I thought was great. Now, I mean, Ocarina of Time did a couple things better as far as, like... Um, I don't want to say... I, I think dungeon design-wise, like the layouts of the dungeon were smart... I want to say smarter in Ocarina of Time because each one of them had you doing something different. Yeah. Some of the later ones were a little lazy, like Shadow Temple was kind of linear and Spirit Temple was kind of linear. Yeah. Uh, no, but, Spirit Temple was really good. Uh, the bad thing about... The Spirit Temple, you have to do... You have to oh, do yeah, you had to go back and forth. Yeah, you, you had, had to go, go back and like, forth. Like they had the Young Link part. And then I forgot about that. That one was really good. I forgot about but, that. But I do agree with you about the Shadow Temple. Uh, Shadow Temple because the bad thing about Twilight Princess is almost every dungeon in Twilight Princess is a straight linear. It's go, yeah. you, you have to follow a straight route and grab the keys and you have to hit the doors in the right order. Because in Ocarina of Time, sometimes you'd have keys and you go in different doors. You can yeah, you have a choice. Exactly. Twilight Princess does a lot of linearity. And they they hold design. your hand in that regard. Right. Because if... I mean, you couldn't... They, Ocarina of Time would never put you in a, in a position where you were stuck. Right. But they would... You know, if you used... A small key for the wrong room, you'd have to break your back to find. The yeah, other room. you could still get through it. Yeah, you still and get they, through they, it. But I think they to, tried to remedy that with yeah. Twilight Princess. They, and, they held your hand, and then you you ended up getting these linear dungeons, which not a lot of people. I mean, some people do like that. Yeah. Um, but I think with future Zeldas, they need to kind of do a little mix between the Breath of the Wild style and I, the traditional dungeons. I don't. I don't hate the idea of Link turning into a wolf, but I don't hate that idea either. But I don't. I, the gameplay of it was a little weak. It cause, was because you end up holding the B button, and then the yeah. big the big radius came out, and you had to kill all the bad guys at the same time. It was a good change of pace. I'll give you that because there's always that change of pace in Zelda games. Now, I will admit that I kind of got tired of it after, like, the fifth time of doing it. Because, you know, it's because until you lift the, sh- the Shadow Veil, you know. Oh, yeah, you, you, yeah, have, to, you, have, to do, you have to do Wolf Link. And, and you know what's you know, another bad thing I didn't think about? Mm-hmm. This might make me detract on my statement I just said. Is remember that you had to go collect those little orbs to clear the, the, the twilight areas? Remember you had to go yeah. bring them to the sacred animals? Yeah. Those got kind of old as well. Yeah. I think that might be the key difference between Ocarina of Time and Twilight Princess. Yeah. Is that Ocarina of Time just kind of set this foundation, and because it was such a great foundation, it doesn't mm-hmm. have too many flaws. But Twilight Princess tried to do something different following yeah. Wind Waker, which did a lot of things different and nailed it. Yeah. And it just... Not that it was bad, it just... I haven't played it, a bad Zelda it, game. It just has, it just didn't nail it like the other yeah. ones did. And also, it came out later in the lifespan, so it you know, kind of got poo-pooed on as far as its graphical fidelity. In all honesty, man, like... Uh, it was a very dark it, game, it was, just but, in general. But, some of, but the best Zelda games are the darker ones. That's why I love the Majora's Mask. That's why I love Twilight Princess. That's why I love Ocarina of Time. 
And, oh, and the darker Zelda games are the better ones, in and my opinion. Remember, Except for Wind, Wind Waker. Wind Waker, top five Zelda. I want to say top three. You remember the, the opening scene of Twilight Princess whenever you're like on the farm and you're yep. like wrangling the goats and yep. stuff? I love Farm Boy so Link. Great. That, that was incredible. So great. Um, that was the first time we saw him. We, we, Farm Boy Link. That's right. We talked about Four Swords Adventures. Yeah. We talked, we, that one, that was a, that's a good party game. That really is. It's a really great game it's because really it's, it really incentivizes four-player yep. gameplay. And also, uh, right next to it, Crystal Chronicles. Yep. Uh, the only, I think the only Final Fantasy game on the GameCube system. Um, yeah. And, you know, I think if you had the all the, the stuff you needed, all the equipment you needed to play it, yeah. it was a really great experience. Yeah, a lot really of people was. hate on it. I really love Crystal Chronicles. Well, they Chronicles. soured, honestly, they soured a lot of, they soured the taste in a lot of people's mouths. Because uh, you had to have the equipment. Well, you had to that have the... and they made it themselves, made it even worse with the new edition that just came out. It's horrible. Oh, God. No, I'm not even talking about that. Well, that's what, that's what I'm saying, though. Like, I think a lot of people, I think that kind of left a sour taste in people's mouths. So now when people think about the old Crystal Chronicles, they yeah. automatically assume. The they, 2020 they're version. They're just reminded of the 2020 version. Was it 2020? Yeah, it was 2020. Yeah, I think yeah, it was. That was the 20... I think it was during the pandemic. Yeah, they had everything going for it, and they just, mm-hmm. man, they dropped the ball on that. Uh, but Crystal Chronicles is a really great game, and I I wish we could get another game set in that universe. Yep. Um, because I like the races that you can choose from mm-hmm. on here more than I do. That's what I really like. Final about Fantasy that. 14. I know oh, it's kind really? of more wow. of a chibi, cutesy version, yeah. but like they had the remember they had the humans. I forget the the Ukes, the uh, the Selkies, the uh, the Lilties. And I forget the other one, but it's I basically don't, I don't remember all that. They because they had the, the regular humans yeah. that were all about like defensive play. Uh, you had the little teas that were like offensive with the spear and stuff. That's like the little short like yeah. onion looking guys. Then you had the Ukes that are like the magic users that are like these astral beings that yeah. that were your mages. And you had the Selkies that was like the thief class and they were like all agility based. Yeah. And so you could pick your different characters. That's pretty cool. Uh, and I, I wish we could see another like. Multiplayer uh, Crystal Chronicles type game. Yeah, I me mean, too. But it'll, it'll, it'll probably that. it'll probably never happen. No, because they ruined they ruined it, and they think and, and instead of saying we messed up, they say oh people don't like that no more. And it's like no, we do like it. You just messed yeah, it up. Yeah, you're right. It didn't make money, and that's all that matters. Yeah. Uh, Soul yeah. Caliber Two. That oh man, the Look, best the best version the of best it version because of you get to Calibur. play as Link yeah. from, from Legend of Zelda, and they had such a cool array of weapons that he had. You could use yeah. you could. Use his standard master sword. Yeah. You could use the megaton hammer. You could use the, the great big Goron fair, sword. The big Goron never sword. used it because it took health to use. Yeah, it. yeah. And then you could use. Uh, he had like the 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 canes the from cane of from Verna. from, uh, from yeah, Link's that, the past. Yeah. And he had the great fairy sword. Which was the best, his, his <coughs> ultimate weapon. And and you know when Soul Calibur two came out, it was on PS two, Xbox, and. GameCube, GameCube. I mean, they had a guest character character on each one For of them. Each one of them, yeah. You know, they had Link, who was the best one on GameCube. Oh yeah. And they had Spawn for some reason for Spawn the X. Xbox. Uh, he was like the second coolest one. And then they had Haichi from Tekken on the yeah. PS2 version, which is the lamest version because yeah, he didn't yeah. use a weapon. Exactly. He didn't even use a weapon. How does he? How do Soul you, Calibur is basically exactly. Tekken with weapons, yeah, right? Pretty much. How do you how do you play Soul Calibur without a weapon? Uh, that's pretty lame. I don't know. But I thought it was really cool that they gave him Soul. Uh, was it Soul Edge? What was the what was the bad? One? Yeah, Soul. Yeah, the Soul Edge. The Soul Edge. Everybody's got like a bad one. Yeah, with the eyeball yeah, on the it. Eyeball on it. He had like an eyeball on it. And you can shield. play him in that little like campaign mode. That was really cool. I yeah, like that. Soul Calibur is a really great game, and it was one of the, the thing about it is we're talking about all these different games, and we're not even halfway through this list, but the GameCube had such a variety. Variety. Fighting yeah. games, That's racing games, games, platforming too. games. Uh, first person shooting games, yeah. third person shooting games. I mean, puzzle games, party games. And it, and we got everything. Everything. We got everything over here. Yeah. Come play the GameCube. With Come us. on, get the GameCube, boy. We're gonna, we're gonna show you a good time. <laughs> uh, dude, two Star Fox games. Yeah. Star Fox Adventures. Yes. Which is, that's kind of a divisive game. I understand that. Yeah. But it's basically a Zelda style adventure game. But you get to play. As Fox. Fox gets on his ship. He gets out of his ship and you get to run around. I mean, they did have some ship segments. They weren't all that great. But you get to run around this dinosaur planet. I mean, if you you know it, I mean, there's a little bit of development history with it. There's a reason why there was a dinosaur game in development for Nintendo 64 and it had a Fox character. And they're like, hey, 
we're Nintendo, we have a Fox character, and Rareware was making it, and they were working really close with Nintendo on the 64. They were like with, a second party. With Conquer and Banjo yeah. and Jet Force Gemini and all yeah. those great games, Goldeneye. Recipes and, went rare. Yeah, well, that's another that's a topic for another day, <laughs> unfortunately. Recipes. Um, but, you know, Rare was making this game, and then uh, Nintendo was like, hey, use our Fox. We have a Fox character. Yeah. Put him in there, and you can use the Star Fox character. Um, and they did. And it, it ended up it being a, a really good it. game. You, and like you're not running around shooting things. You got that staff, and, yeah. and you got like you can shoot like fire blasts out of it. Yeah, I have some complaints with it because like some of the sound effects sound like stock oh, yeah. sound effects, and some of the the music is really good. The music's really good. I really like the music in oh, the yeah. game, uh, and it just looked really it good. Did. Remember really Fox's did. fur and like the water dripping off of him when you get when you jump in the water and the water rippling. It's yeah. just a really incredible looking game. They put a lot of time and and. Uh, they put a lot of time in it, you can tell. They did. And Star Fox Assault. Yeah, that was... That, ooh, that man, one that had... Was a good one. It had the on-rails yeah. Star Fox levels. And then Fox gets out of the ship, but this time... He's he got, ain't got no staff. He got guns. Yeah, he got guns. Guns, baby. You run in those bases and you go... Brr, brr, you're like, you're <laughs> like straight up shooting yep. guns. That's a really underrated game. I had one of game. the best multiplayer experiences. Oh, dude, yeah, the Star four Fox player game. four player split screen. Where you where can, you... like, go up to ships, get in a ship. If yeah, they had the ship, vehicles. Yeah. They had vehicles. You can jump into a landmaster. You can jump in, if you played, like, over 100 get matches. Get in a wolfen. You can get the wolfen. The wolfen. Dude, it looks totally cool in this game. Dude, yes. And you get this unique story. This is like one of the. This is the only Star Fox game, on rail Star Fox game, that's a unique story because every single other one of them, including Star Fox sixty four, is just a retelling of the, the original same, Star Fox yes. story. This is the only one where like Peppy is old and retired, yep. and uh, you, you know, got Crystal on your team. Yeah, you Crystal on the team from Star Fox Adventures, and um, dude, that's just a and really. Pigma good... turns into a, a, a aperoid. A, a, yeah, the aperoids. Yeah, dude. That is a totally cool storyline, and then you get to, man, it's so so. Pigman's good. face gets put on that big old satellite. And you remember, thing. you get to go back to the dinosaur planet from Adventures yes, and go, you save, get to go a, save them, save the dinosaurs, save the dinosaurs. You go down there with an assault rifle and, brrr, and kill the bad guys. Well, freedom's here, boys. <laughs> <laughs> and then you got uh, the multiplayer mode where you can play as Fox and Falco and Slippy. Wolf. You can play as Wolf and the other Wolf characters, Leon and the. Could you, could you play as them? I don't know. I don't know, but you could play as these, and they had different stats. That's you could play them in the multiplayer mode, dude. So good. Star Fox is all really good. So good. WarioWare Party Games. That was that was that was the one. WarioWare Micro Games. I mean, that's yes. that's one of the best. Part. I remember playing that with you. Remember they would have the, the all, funniest. They would have the moments. off-screen rules. Yeah. It would, like you would, you would have to do something that yeah. the game can't make you like in person. That you like like you do this one with one hand or like. You know, you know, you gotta scream every time you hit the A button or something. Uh, <laughs> man, th- that was where the WarioWare party games were born, and we're getting a new WarioWare yes! game this freaking month, this month on the Switch. I or can't wait. Wait, wait no, September? there's a demo for it. I forgot to download. What? We gotta go download the demo, Steve. Uh, dude, Time Splitters Two and Time Splitters Future Perfect, probably the best first-person shooter experiences on the GameCube. Yes. Similar to Halo, it had like all these different modes, and I think I don't think it had the online mode on it. No, but not it, on the It game had four-player split screen, yeah. and, and that was like if you wanted a Halo-type game, you could play it. I mean, it wasn't on the caliber of Halo. Don't get well, me wrong. No. Yeah, but, but I mean, you, you could know. play it on the GameCube, and that's a really good yeah. game. Future Perfect's like the best first-person shooter great game value on Halo. GameCube. Yeah, I mean, and it had a story mode that was really incredible with the the time traveling. Yeah, and Future Perfect time took, splitters. Dude, Future Perfect took it to the next level, and I remember playing. A demo of Time Splitters 2 on PS2 and be like, man, I'm gonna play this game. And I had my GameCube. Uh, we're gonna go into some personal stories yeah. about the GameCube as well uh, in a little bit. You got to. Um, Bomberman games, Pac Man World was a 3D platforming game, Mega Man. I don't care. <laughs> they had the Mega Man collection. Yeah, the Mega Man. Uh, I thought the Pac-Man games were okay. Mario, Stri- uh, so Mario sports games out of the wazoo. Mario Strikers, yep. Mario Golf, Mario, Mario Party Four, Five, Six, and Seven. I think <laughs> were all on GameCube. Wow. Um, I talked about Jungle Beat, Donkey Kong. I didn't like those games very much. You had to have the. the bon- I like Donkey Kong a lot. You had to have the Bongo, the controllers. Bongo controllers. I didn't ever have it. We man, we got Jungle Beat, and Jungle Beat was meh because it was an adventure game that you. That had was to the platform. Yeah. But uh, Congo was the one where they had like the songs. Like there was Guitar Hero and Bongo, Bongo Hero. Yeah, it had like didn't legit have like a Blink One Eighty Two. Yeah, song, dude, right? all the small things was on Donkey Kong One. That's, that's interesting. Yeah, that's a Nintendo licensed game. Yeah, but it's and you can play you can play all the small things. Yep. 
from Blink-182. Doom, doom, clap! Doom, doom, clap! Doom, yeah, doom, yeah. clap! Yeah, yeah, the clap! Yeah. Dude, that's really cool. <laughs> not in a bad way, not the clap. <laughs> yeah, the bongo clap. The bongo uh, clap! And that's that's what Donkey Kong's uh, special move was in, in Brawl. Yeah. yeah it's really bad. Yeah. Uh, dude, <laughs> about all, that. all the Tony Hawk games, Tony Hawk Underground 1, 2... Uh, Tony Hawk's uh, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater three and four. Yeah. Tony Hawk's American Wasteland, yeah. all on the GameCube. All of that on the GameCube. And Cube. I do. I have very personal experience with those games. Like I remember playing those games to a pulp. Man. Dude, remember getting to the New Orleans level in Tony Hawk Pro Skater two? It's like yeah, and it's like barely. It's my city. Yeah, it's like and it, then you're like. This is nothing like New Orleans. But it was really cool because you go get the voodoo man yeah. and you can unleash the ghosts. And it was and like turn a, into a zombie. Yeah. A zombie, a zombie in New Orleans. Yeah, dude, that's totally cool. Uh, dude. R I put R E freaking four Resident Evil four Resident Evil maybe the best game on the GameCube maybe one of the best games ever made but Resident Evil four was a GameCube exclusive mm-hmm. you could only play it on the Nintendo GameCube yep. for a, a, you know a certain amount of time and it eventually got ported a bazillion times to other consoles yeah. but first to the PlayStation two but man, even though they weren't supposed to if you played it on PS two. You were playing an inferior version because the GameCube uh, version had way better visuals, way the, better graphics, way better graphics, way better like like all the ki- like the characters look a little bit blocky in the PS2 version. Yep. But Resident Smoother. Evil 4 was the first like over the shoulder. I don't want to say the first one ever, but it revolutionized. The first, third, it was the first Resident Evil third first person Resident shooters Evil like that, yeah. because it did the over the shoulder aiming down the sights using the laser sight. I mean, Gears of War eats your heart out yeah. because. And, and like Dead Space is even uh, like quoted saying it. Like the guy was like, "Look, this is Resident Evil 4 in space." Like we, Resident Evil 4 is one of the best designed horror survival horror games. It has the perfect blend of action yep. and horror. It has like the coolest environments. The controls are like Bata. <laughs> it's so good, dude. Being able to aim and shoot like the individual like shooting a zombie in the leg. Yep. And he reaches down for his leg and that opens him up to so you can go suplex Basta, something. Hijo de puta. You know what I'm saying? Like it gives you all this variety. Yeah. All the different guns, so like many, shotguns, so many handguns. Epic moments with that game too. Dude. Yeah, dude. Get we and, quote it to this day. And you get Leon back for the yeah. first time in forever. You finally get to play as Leon. You just got Salazar. And it's got Ramon, Ramon Salazar. Yeah, it's got Salazar. Yamo Ramon Salazar. Dude, there's a reason that they're remaking it. There's a reason that they just ported it to everything. They better not ruin it. And they're making it in VR. I'm getting it. There's a dude. I've bought. I have so many different versions of Resident Evil Four laying around here. You, you can. You can't. I probably bought that game more than I did Skyrim. Uh, I, I, I probably about the same. Yeah. Because uh, I bought it on GameCube. I bought it on Wii. Uh, I never bought it on PS2, but I have. I got yeah. it on PC. I have it on. I have it on PC. I have it on. I have it on. Let's see. I have it on GameCube. I have it on Wii because of the controller. Right. Yeah. I have it on PC. Uh, you got it for me for PS4. That's um, right. For your birthday. I almost got it for the Switch. I was this close. I'm to so it close. The I'm so close. Because it's it's uh, portable. I tell you what though, if I ever find myself going on a on a, on a long trip again, like on an airplane or something, I'm probably gonna get it. Dude, Resident Evil 4. I I just recently re- replayed it. Yeah. I can play it from start to finish and. It never gets old. Never. I can restart a file, play it on hard mode. Yeah. Restart a, restart a file, play it on normal mode. I can I can replay an old file and have all like the infinite ammo and stuff. I just love playing that game. It just feels so good. good. So um, good. And speaking of Resident Evil, the Resident Evil remake, the uh, yeah on GameCube looked incredible. They, they started it. They, they started the uh, that was the first time that they, they I mean they released Resident Evil remake. And Resident Evil Zero on GameCube. Yeah, it, Resident Evil Zero is my next one. Yep. Resident Evil Zero, a, a unique, brand new story Dude, about Evil, Rebecca Chambers. Resident Evil scared me to no end when I got it. Dude, I had to like, like... Dude, the GameCube was a place to play them. Yes, it was, it was terrifying, dude. That that first scene when when the zombies crunched over that dude, Kenneth, uh, haunted, haunts me to this day. Like, like that, when I think that, about it, I get goosebumps. That Cause, original cause, zombie. Because, like, okay, it looks so much better. Like, so I mean, it was much better. Look it at, was scary on PS One, but it, like the the remake was just literally like frame for frame yeah. was almost the same as that game. I, I didn't mean to rhyme, no, but no, they no. even added didn't didn't they add Lisa Trevor stuff to the remake? Yeah. Oh my God, Man, Lisa Trevor. you remember the sharks, the plant yeah, monsters, yeah, yeah. the crimson yeah, heads, the crimson heads. Boy, you a crimson head. <laughs> I just. I'm dude, Resident Evil. So good, dude. GameCube was the place to play Resident Evil games. Yeah. you could even buy Resident Evil Two and Three and Three on the GameCube. You can get they had them. all 
of the mainline Resident Evil games you, on the GameCube. You get, oh man, I see something down here. Get we're gonna get Resident to. Evil One remake, Resident Evil Zero, uh, Resident Evil Two, Resident Evil Three, Code Veronica, and um, Resident Evil Four. All on GameCube. All on GameCube. Chibi Robo was another game. Animal Crossing had its was born on GameCube. We talked about that earlier with, Ooh, the, with the memory card. Animal Crossing has such a bad taste in my mouth because I, I rented it for Blockbuster. It did not have any that's space. a game. That's a game you can't rent. Yeah, man. I know. And I you see, like I tried. You to didn't delete, know that. I deleted a bunch of stuff to make room for it and then I instantly regretted it. And that, it. that was a new IP yeah. that Nintendo brought. I mean, I know it has some history with on being on the 64 disc drive, but it made its way... We ain't got the, that here. It made it on its way onto the GameCube. Yeah, exactly. It, it was a unique, incredible game that gave you a reason to turn on your GameCube every single day. Yep. Um, Eternal Darkness is a horror game. I wish I played that one. I never that, played it. It, it was kind of, you know, it was a... It wasn't a popular game. It, it's kind of a cult classic. It, it, it was, but it wasn't. It was only popular within a certain group of people. Because let me tell you something. I, I, had, a, I had a subscription to Nintendo Power. And I'm, I'm not even kidding when I say this. I'm pretty sure Nintendo Power had just talked about it in every issue of Nintendo Power. Like, I'm pretty sure that they talked about it. Every well, that was a, was that a Nintendo published game? Yeah, uh, I don't know if they published it, and but that it was, was an that was an M rated game. So that might be that 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 yeah, look that up for me. Uh, that was Nintendo's like first foray into like the M rated game space. So I mean, that was a game that would mess with your head. It would say, "Hey, we deleted your memory card," and it would like it would make it look like your your TV was adjusting its volume, and like your character's head would fall off, and you had like the sanity meter that controlled all of that. It was super cool and unique. Yeah, it was it was published by Nintendo. Published by Nintendo. And developed by Silicon Knights. An M-rated game published Nintendo. by Nintendo. On their only on the GameCube. Have they it's done gotta it? Be the only one. Have they done it since? I don't know. Have they? GameCube, son. GameCube, son. GameCube, son. Billy Hatcher. Let's go, okay, yeah, I don't like it. I, 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 I never, oh, of, I know that one. That one's Skies of Arcadia. I thought you were going to say Skyrim. I was like, like, Skies of Arcadia, an incredible Dreamcast RPG that got ported over. Pokemon Coliseum, the next step in the Pokemon um, uh, Pokemon Stadium franchise. Uh, we talked about Star Fox Adventures. Rogue Squadron 2, son. Dude, that is the best one in the series. That's the best Star, Fighter, Star Wars Starfighter game. Rogue Squadron, do you remember those lighting effects coming yep. off those lasers? Yeah. Like, man, that game looks so incredible. Flying so around, good. you could control the, the one thing that D-pad was good for, controlling your squadron, yep. telling them where to go. Yeah. Dude, just flying around. Star Fox, eat your heart out. I mean, a lot of people talk about Star Fox, you know, not having a game. This was a really great yeah. alternative. Yeah. Man, back in the day when Star, Star Wars games were good. Man, pour one out. Let, let me tell you, let me tell you, Squadrons, was, uh, Squ squadrons did a good job at scratching that itch. Make you know, if people wanted a good Star Wars Starfighter Star game. I think and you could choose. You could choose your. A decent you could choose your ship. Yeah. X-wing. Yeah. Naboo Starfighter. Naboo Starfighter. It was yeah, a secret was a one. one. That was a secret one. Yeah, but Rogue, Rogue Squadron Two really just set itself apart from the rest of them. It's so good. Uh, so I have Rogue Leader. I have. I have. That's that's Rogue Squadron Two. Uh, do I? Oh uh, yeah, right there. Uh, right there uh, next to. There's um, Rebel Assault. Oh, no, not Steve. Rebel Steve, Assault. grab that. Uh, Second shelf, third to the right, right there. Right. Yeah, grab that. I can't see it because it's got a game yeah, stuff. I, I got two. Yeah. yeah, dog. So I got it. I got it too. I um, bought this for eight dollars. I can't find the third. I one. bought this for eight dollars. I might go fire that up when I get home. Man, that's, my a, week's so that's a good game. That's a really good game, dude. Um, oh, your receipt fell out. My receipt, man. Look, when did I buy this? Hold on. I just wait. I just found a receipt in this case. Hold on. Uh. Wow, I bought this in 2010. Wow. Wow, I bought this almost 12 years ago. Wow. Wow. I remember the guy who worked at GameStop used to um, make fun of me. It looks like I also bought Dave Mirror Freestyle BMX. Make fun of you. For $3. Yeah, they make fun of me because I would come in and I would buy like just random GameCube games all the time. Yeah, sure, stick that back in there. Was this the one in the Mall of Louisiana? No, it was Dead Springs. Oh, yeah, yeah. Anyway. Uh, that, dude, like, that dude wrote, I was a chump. On the Smash Bros. Brawl tournament. Dude, the Denim, yeah, the, the Denim Springs one sucked. Uh, why, why did I ever do to that guy? No, those guys were just douches. Yeah. That's why I have such a hate for game stuff. Uh, Zelda Collection. Yeah. Remember the Zelda Collection? Yeah, that had the Master Quest. Master Quest, Ocarina of Time, and it had... Um, uh, the other had some other so, Zelda games. So, in it. so there was two of them. Okay, there was there was Zelda Ocarina of Time and Zelda Ocarina of Time Match Quest. And there was the, co the collection. And then the basically. collector's edition, which had Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask, Zelda One and Zelda Two. Did it have Link to the Past? No, I don't think so. Oh man, that's such a good pack. Yeah. 
Uh, you can't find that pack anywhere. Monkey Ball. Monkey Ball. Monkey Ball. That's a great party game, dude. Uh, that, that, I know you, if you played it and gave it a chance, I think you'd really like it. Uh, Mario Sluggers. SpongeBob. Battle for Bikini Bottom. Simpsons Hit and Run, dude. If you wanted your Grand Theft Auto fix and you wanted to play on GameCube, Simpsons, Simpsons Hit and Run. That is a, that's a really that's good, a good game. One. I really love that game. I own it on uh, the original Xbox. But I remember renting the crap. I would rent it like a lot from games. Dude, it was really. Popular. I mean, from a blockbuster. I love how they did it too. It's like you're not hijacking cars. You just you just borrow, yeah, you just ride. If you if you get your own car, you can you're drive driving it. But, but yeah, you, you never use the pedestrian cars. But if you if you found a pedestrian car, you would you, you would just ride, ride with them. Yeah. Dude, Lord of the Rings games. Yeah. Was that Twin Towers? Two Towers and uh, uh, I said Twin Two Towers. Yeah, uh, dude, stuck you, in 2001. Yeah. <laughs> Do you remember playing that game? Yeah, dude. dude yeah, that is dude. such a good game. So good. I mean, it was linear, but it, like, remember the hack and slash? Yeah, Man, dude. That is Freaking a. Freaking Helm's Deep was one of the most intense moments. Dude, do you remember that when you could play as Gandalf and you had the, the sword and the staff at yeah, the same time? Yeah, that, that, that one was Return of the King, so that dude, one was really cool. I remember playing as Gimli all the time. That was three player co op, wasn't it? Um, or two player? Not, not two towers, but uh, Return of the King was. Dude, you remember we could all play it? Because yeah. he had Eric. There was two, though. Yeah, uh, Aragorn, Legolas, and Gimli to choose yeah, from. Yeah, Return of the King. So, so two towers was single player only. And, and your characters and... would level up. Do you yeah, that? yeah. Sorry, and they had a talent tree. Myself. Talent trees. Dude, you get freaking my... mithril arrows that, that burn with a that. purple fire. And you could draw two at a time. Yeah, Legolas, dude. Legolas, dude. I used to play as Legolas all the time. Why have they not? Re- go... <laughs> Are those on Steam or something? They need to re-release those games, man. Let me see. I don't think so. Those are really good games. Spider Man Two. Dude, that's a. The the it was the best Spider Man game until Insomniac came out with theirs. Dude, Spider Man Two really like was the first superhero game that was like really really good. Really good. Like actually having to have somewhere an anchor point for your web to reach so you could actually swing properly instead of just shooting your webs into the air and just going. An open world New York City with dynamic events that eventually get really repetitive. A cool storyline and it was based on the movie yeah. but they added stuff like, like there's Mysterios in that game. Yep. I think Rhinos in that game. They got all kinds of cool like... It's based off of the Tobey Maguire movies because it's Toby and he Ma- and he does the voice acting. Yeah, here. it's Tobey Maguire Spider Man. Yeah, sure. We we'll get a blue one. We we'll get a blue one. I know I'm snacking on my airhead. But snacking. but they had all kinds of different, like you were saying. Like I remember playing, and I was just like, oh man, is the Rhino in this movie? And then yeah. I actually watched it, and he wasn't. And I'm just it like, was it was a good licensed game, and so I mean, we just talked about Lord of the Rings. Mm-hmm. Good licensed games that you don't really like. That kind of, that's something that kind of disappeared. Like. Anytime a new movie, like a new James Bond game, a new a new James Bond movie would come out, there'd be a game for it, right? Yeah. And you don't really see that as much these days. I mean, they probably still make them, and they're probably just like mobile games or poo-poo or something. Pretty much, yeah. But back then, these licensed games would be sometimes like mediocre to really good. Yeah. And Spider-Man was one of the ones that was even beyond really good. It was like... It was like a masterpiece. Like, it's very rare to see a game based off of a movie take off the way that Spider-Man 2 did. Yeah, agreed. Um, Harvest Moon. They had a Harvest Moon game. Mm-hmm. Wario World. There was a Wario 3D platforming Platform. like hack and slash type game. It was really good. That one was really good. There is <laughs> another, there's another M-rated game I'm about to bring up. I'm not sure. I, can you look up who published this? Steve, what's your last name? Geist. Remember that game, Geist? Dude, that's a good game. Did you was that M-rated? It was. Dude, I played, the, I played the heck out of that game. That's a good... I never finished it. I finished it. But, I remember but, it. But, but I, I remember playing the heck it out of It was this really unique take on a first-person shooter where you could, like, expel your soul from your yeah. body and you could possess, like, rats and security guards. That and, is a really good idea. And it was, I'm be it was all these cool little, like, puzzles built around, like, you might have to turn to a rat to go distract a guard to get him away from a door so you can walk as a scientist through a security gate. It never released in Japan. Probably because it's rated M. It's, it's a, it was canceled in Japan. It released North America. Who, who's, who's the developer and publisher? Uh, let's see. Publisher, Nintendo. Nintendo, see? Developer, In Space Inc. and Nintendo. Nintendo. Dude, Geist for Smash. <laughs> the Geist guy. The Geist guy from Sma- for Smash. Dude, I remember playing What's his name, like, Raimi or something? I think it was. Yeah, because the little girl would go, Raimi, and you're like, I just remember, like, that's creepy. Your, your, your CO, uh, like, your commanding officer, yeah. was this black dude, and you had, like, the secret handshake or whatever. He would do, like, this thing. He possessed the girl, and he... <laughs> and he does the handshake. <laughs> remember you remember that? that? You remember that? Yeah, he was just like... 
Right? Really? <laughs> and it was so cool because it wasn't just like a, you know, you have a certain amount of ammo. It wasn't like a shooty first person shooter. It was like kind of like a puzzle type game. Um, and you really weren't doing a lot of shooting unless you were a security guard or the main character who has a cool little pistol. Um, that was a really good game. Really and good. And another M-rated Nintendo published yeah. game only on the, on the GameCube. GameCube. They need to remake that one. I'm gonna be they, honest. They do. I want to. Dude, I might like write a letter to Nintendo every day to get that one remade. Dude, that one was so. That, it's such a such a unique take on a game. And too. it had some good music. If yeah. I remember correctly, I remember renting that game and just being blown away. I was so blown away by it. That's a good game. Such a good game. Um, it's a shame that it didn't get as popular as it did, but I guarantee you, its popularity was limited by two things. For one, it was stuck on the GameCube, and for two, it was rated M. I think that's what happened with the Nintendo. Well, Nintendo took a gamble with it. They, I can't believe Nintendo folks. Anyway, I know, I know. Dude, Dragon Ball Z games. Dragon Ball Z Budokai. Budokai, Budokai 1, Budokai 2, Budokai it, 3. Yeah, I think they had all the Dragon Ball Z fighting games on here you play them. Need for Speed Underground was on yeah. here. Uh, dude, Gauntlet Dark Legacy. The OG couch co-op. Dude, we, we talked about it before. Play the um, heck out of on the that arcade, game, dude. the arcade episode, but it came to home consoles and the Nintendo GameCube was the best place to play it. I don't care what anybody says it was the best on the GameCube. Well, I can tell you why. Here's definitive proof. Firstly, you don't need a multi-tap. Yep. you got the four controller ports right there. Yep. Secondly, it had special features only on the GameCube version that you could toggle the weapons, like yep. the items that you get, right? So you can go, like if you pick up a, 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 like a three-way shot, you could just keep it and you could activate it when you're ready. Yeah. Whereas the other games, when you picked it up, it was just you used it till you ran out. And so if you went to the item shop and you want to go fight a boss, you could just hold all your items and go activate them right before you walk through the portal. And then you, you might not even use all your items and you could just go farm bosses on the GameCube version. Yeah. And it, it looked really good too. Dude, we need to stream that game or something. We need to like yeah, we have do. a playthrough and stream it. That's what we need to yeah, do. Yeah, we do. I, I love Gauntlet. Dude, that's a good game. I love Such Gauntlet Dark Legacy. That is, that is like literally top 10, top 5, top 3 co op games of oh, all yeah. time. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Top, Dude. Top 2 and it's not 2. 007 games. Uh, yeah. Agent Under Fire. Yeah, those, are, those are really good. Uh, Rogue Agent. Nightfire. Goldeneye Rogue Agent. Goldeneye Rogue I have Rogue. even from Russia with Love, the third person shooter. Dude, where those you... Goldeneye games are really good. I don't care. Uh, the, I mean, all, all the 007 games are really good. Oh, like, oh, yeah, like, that's what I meant. They, they, were, they, were, they were always mediocre to really good, right? Yeah. Uh, Nightfire. Incredible game. Oh, yeah. Uh, Agent Under Fire is even a good game. Now, uh, we're talking about all these good games. Sometimes they would be kind of... Unfortunately, sometimes you get some poo poo. Well, there, there, the the GameCube itself would be the thing that held it back. Yeah. Because you know what's not fun if you know what the GameCube controller looks like. This right thumbstick is a lot smaller and more tweaky than the left and it's, thumbstick. And, it's weird and when you're using place. it, when you're using it for um for first person shooters, it got kind of wonky. Yeah. Now, if you if the GameCube was your only system, you made it work. Yeah. I, I mean, it, it works just fine on Time Splitters. It works just fine on on 007 games. It works fine on guys. Uh, and, but. Like Metroid Prime, for example, I don't even think it used the C stick. No, it, you uh, you would click the yeah, you, you, you would click like aiming, like, you would click like Gold Eye type aiming. Yeah, you would click R to to, yeah. to hold stationary and then go up and down. Uh, but it had like an auto aim kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, so even Nintendo kind of knew how to work around those limitations. Yeah. Uh, 1080 snowboarding. Yeah, that was that, a good one. that was more snowboarding sports games, Harry Potter games, Prince of Persia games, fighting games like Capcom versus SNK. Custom Robo. Remember Custom Robo? Yeah, it was like that arena yeah. robot fighting game. NBA Street with the Mario characters in yeah. it. Remember NBA Street V3? Whenever yeah. you could play as Mario and you could be like dunking on people. Like as a basketball game. Like you'd be like That's dunking hilarious. like as Mario. You would play. You could play like NBA play, NBA players. I, right? I think I think Mario and them were even in SSX or was it SSX or 1080? Uh, One of the two. They were in a snowboarding game. See, NBA was it NBA Street? You said NBA Street V3 it was one that had Mario in it. And I'm pretty sure uh, the NFL Street games were also on GameCube, weren't they? I don't know. I don't know. I'd have to look. They may. They might not have been. Uh, Mortal Kombat games. You could play Mortal Kombat um, Deadly Alliance, Mortal Kombat Deception uh, on the GameCube, and they had bonus features on Deception where you could play Shao Kahn and Goro only on the GameCube, dog. Nice. Remember Killer7? Killer7, that Capcom game that was like a cell shaded like weird shooting game? I never played it, but it was on GameCube. Hulk Ultimate Destruction, Beautiful Joe, the Burnout Games. That's uh, my introduction to the to the Burnout games was on the Nintendo GameCube, man. Those are really good racing games. <laughs> hey, get this: you can play as the Beastie Boys, you can play as Shaq on uh, NBA NBA Street Volume Three. 
on the GameCube. Yeah. On the so GameCube. you can play as the Beastie Boys against the Mario. You characters. can play the Mario characters against LeBron James. <laughs> <laughs> That's wild. That's wild. Sorry. Um, dude, the, but the Burnout games were really, really good. Oh, yeah, and they, really good they looked incredible on the GameCube. Oh yeah. They're so good. They're, I, those were like that's. Those were the arcade racing games that got me into arcade racers. Um, Battalion Wars was like a, a real-time strategy game. Mm-hmm. Spyro games. Dance Dance Revolution Mario Mix. They had a DDR game. Yeah. They had one. The final it boss was. was a, well, he wasn't the final boss. Oh, I thought he was but the final he, boss. He, well, Waluigi was like the, the main antagonist for like yeah. the first quarter of that game. That's funny. Um, but you know, DDR was something that was big in, in yeah. that generation. And you... It might not have been the best way to play it, but you had a way to play it on the exactly. GameCube. You um, had it, huh? And the, and yeah, the dance pad. Yeah, I have it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I just put any. If there was a sports game, it probably had a port on the on the GameCube. Uh, the college football games did not. The college football didn't. College come? football did not come back to Nintendo until the Wii. Interesting. And it was it was like stupid easy because they used the motion controls uh, to play it poo-poo. and I would like blow out opponents 100 to nothing without even trying um, I put on here uh, Red Faction 2 that was a good first yeah, person shooter good uh, Beyond Good and Evil was Freedom Fighters on GameCube I think it may have been uh, I put Wave Race on here, Crazy Taxi, Def Jam Five for New York, Def Jam Vendetta, Def Jam. the best wrestling games yep. ever made. Yep. Where you get to play as all the coolest rappers from yep. back in the day, all the best rappers, and you get to wrestle each other in the first yep. game, and in the second game, you get to beat the ever living crap out of each other. Yep. Um, I, of I might, Final Smash, they had Blazing, dude. That game is so good. So it, good. It really is a really great game. Rest in peace, the doll. They the had match. they had WWE games. I'm pretty yeah, sure. Nobody care about that. We just worry about uh, the Death Jam. And then I just put here third party games in general. Yeah. Um, third party games. I mean, there was a chance if, if there was a third party game. We talked about it earlier. It probably had a port, and it probably was inferior, but it was on the GameCube. Yeah. It was there, like Need for Speed Underground. Yeah. That was a game that was probably ported to the GameCube and probably inferior. They had uh, Metal for Honor too. Uh, Medal of Honor? Me- that's what I meant. Medal of War Honor? <laughs> call, <laughs> call of Duty? <laughs> call for Duty? Call for Duty. Um, but, Steve, did you remember that promo disc? Remember we talked about the promo yep. disc? Before the GameCube came out, I remember we went to... Where did we decide it was? Was it, like, Office Depot or something? <laughs> something or? like that. But they had this, like... It looked like the top of the GameCube right here, and it, and it looked like the little opening, and it had, uh, like, like, the open button. I think I got mine through... No, we got it from the Nintendo Power Magazine, right? No, because it was a pamphlet we, we got from a physical store. I want to say it was Best we Buy. We didn't buy it. They gave it out. No, yeah, yeah they gave it out. Yeah. It was a free demo okay. disc. I don't think it was Best Buy, though, because, I, I, man, i got to find out when that Best Buy opened up. Because um, I feel like y'all moved after that Best Buy opened, but I don't know. Let's see. No, I, I don't think so. Can I look it I up on the internet? So. Let's see, Best Buy, um, when did it open? But I, I put on here some Do You Remember moments, Steve. And I, I want to say, Do You Remember the promo disc? When did you get yours? What was your first time playing? What was the first game you played on it? First game that I played on GameCube. Yeah. Uh, so we kind of talked. We actually kind of talked about uh, my experience with the, with my first GameCube uh, in the very first episode of the Gamer Tales. How? Um, no, second episode. Sorry, it was a sleepover episode because it's it, because basically the story was that we went to Blue Bayou. We went to Blue Bayou. Um, no. Oh yeah, because you could pick. Yeah, because I could pick. pick. We went to Blue Bayou. Wait, what episode was that? It was. It was the. I said it was a sleepover episode. It was a blockbuster episode. This one, man. The blockbuster episode. Yeah. Go back and listen to the blockbuster. Yeah. It's a really good episode. Really good episode. But long story short, um, we got rained out. And my parents said I had to choose between Blue Bayou or which is a water park in which the is area. Water park in the area or GameCube, and I picked Blue Bayou at first. Uh, we, got we got rained out. We got rained out, and they gave us free tickets, gave us free tickets to come tickets back. To come back, and so then I got my game. Game. So you got a little, little bit of both worlds, dude. A little bit dude. of both worlds, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. And so um, we went to Blockbuster. We got it from Blockbuster because uh, Blockbuster had the game's Freedom Pass. When you when you bought a console from Blockbuster, you got a f- you got one free, year. You got a free... one year for the game's Freedom Pass. Wow. And so what we did is that we would basically, you know, you'd bring a game in, trade it in, get a new one. And keep it for as long and as you keep want. it for as long as as long as you're paying for the freedom pass, and you right. kept it the whole time. I probably got melee every time, because 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 what we would do is we would pick a game to get on the freedom pass and keep it. Yeah, that's right. Cause I didn't think you had any games. Yeah, rented. I think we just kept melee and we just and and then like melee is really let my really brother good. pick a game because you know like every week as a treat if we were good. I really want to do go to uh, a gamer tales episode, me and you with uh, like. 
basically the influence of, on uh, that Super Smash Brothers had yeah. in our lives. Uh, because we have a lot to unpack. Oh that. yeah, and that was that was the first game I played on on the GameCube. I remember Melee. walking over to your house. I just I talked about it earlier. Yeah. Seeing that blue Donkey Kong. It's um, crazy. And that's probably the first time. I, I think I played it in a kiosk in a Walmart one time. Mm-hmm. I played Smash Brothers mainly. I picked Bowser because he was new. Yeah. And I was like, why was he not in the first game? And yeah. then I remember playing that and just, you know, having my neck at a 90 degree angle looking up. Because the damn uh, kiosk, the, the kiosk put were, him all the way up yeah. there. Um, oh, man, that's something you don't see very much anymore. No, you those, don't. those demo kiosks. You can't see it right now with the pandemic. Like, they used, like, okay. Right. I think the pandemic finally, <clears throat> I think the pandemic killed them. Put the, put the final nail in the coffin. I, I think so because I think they, they were already losing popularity back then because everyone nowadays has one. Whoever yeah. wants this, like, there's really no point in having yeah. the demos out there because everybody has one. Yeah. Um, I mean, nowadays most people just like, especially you like, you can look at it on Twitch. There, there's no reason to have a kiosk for like an Xbox Pretty or much, a yeah. PlayStation. Switch maybe a little bit more so because of like the waggle controls yeah. and stuff. Well, and, and for the kids. Yeah, but with but, the pandemic right now, there's yeah. no way. Most there's, people, the, I think Twitch has kind of helped out. Yeah, and then Twitch, yeah, Twitch is so, Twi- Twitch has pretty much killed that too. Wait, because... can you remember what was on that promo disc? We looked it up. There weren't any games, but I do remember just watching. I know they had like melee stuff. They had Luigi's Mansion stuff. Uh... We looked this up before. Um... I know it had videos. Um, I think there was a way to play demos on... No, no, there wasn't. Okay, hold on. I, I, found, it, I found a Reddit post. Um, someone that's not about, ours. Did we post? No, that was eight years ago. No, look, that's it. That's that the, is it. That is it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, let's see if I can find out yeah, what was on yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Brandon and I can't see what was on it. Um, dang it. It is, so it is it is a Nintendo Power disc, but I think they were um I think Nintendo Power did it, but I think that um I'm just gonna type in um, promo disc contents, see what comes up. Uh, wait, wait, I think the, I think I found it. The Nintendo Power promo disc. Yep. Uh, wait, it's a video. It's a video. Hold on, I'm clicking on it. I'm gonna turn the volume down. Uh, this guy's showing it. Oh wait, so it was it was remember it was a GameCube disc and you put it in your disc drive in your PC. PC, yeah. And look, remember this menu? Yes, it I would, remember it, that. It would tell you the tech specs. It would have videos for you to watch, and it would have. Um, that a really cool Smash Bros. video with the Mute City. And well, we remember the menu had like it would show the video clips and it would show yeah. the, like screenshots. And like, let's look at the videos. They had a Pikmin trailer. But they, they had the melee trailer, which was just the intro. Hey, turn it up! Turn it up! It's a Mew City, dude! It's a Mew City. It's yeah, you hear that? Mew City theme. They had, they had the melee trailer, the tricky trailer. Here we, here we, here. Oh wait, no, wait, that's a, that's a DK rap. Oops. SSX Tricky, Star Fox Adventures, Rogue Squadron Two, Wave, uh, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater Three. It was all, the, it was all the launch titles. Pretty much, yeah. It was all the launch titles. Dang. Ooh, well, Star, me... Star Fox Adventure was a, was a. No, launch no, title? no, it a launch title, but it was, it was previewed here. Uh, but huh. it, all the launch titles are on there. What year did Star Fox Adventures come out? Uh, it wasn't a launch title, um, but. I remember that promo disc. I remember seeing Melee and being like, oh my god, this can't be real. And, it came uh, out in 2002. See, I thought it was later in the GameCube's life. Wow, yeah. I didn't, realize, that was, late. I I didn't realize it was so early. Um, so, I uh, also put on here, remember your third-party controllers? Uh, I had a lot of those because, you know, my, not not saying my parents were cheap, but your parents were cheap. the third-party controllers were yeah. always like 10 to $20 cheaper than yeah. the, the Nintendo brand. And, but, so, and they would work. They got the job done. They weren't the most comfortable. Not that, mine. Uh, but they always had the freaking turbo button on it. Every, every third-party controller, I felt like, had a turbo well, button on it. Well, they had to it. sell it. Yeah, they had to give it some kind of feature. Uh, let, me, let me tell you what happened with my third-party controller. My third-party controller would shut off my GameCube. What? Yeah. Every time you plug... Well, like, was it Mad Cats? It was Mad Cats. What? One time, I, I can't just remember, I was like in the middle of like an intense fight on Melee, and I was just, I was going to town, you know, and I was like, I wasn't even using the controller, dog. I was using it, like, it was like plugged in, uh-huh. but it was on the floor, and I'm sitting here like going to town, like, and just turn, and, beat him. and then just go, the screen goes so, off, light goes off, fan's still running. I'm I like, had a... oh, he's broken, he's broken, what's going on? I don't know. I flipped out, and then I turned it off, I turned it back on, it wouldn't come back on, I was 
fought my game people. I fought so you unplugged it and plugged it back in? Well, we just, we tried everything, you know, we tried everything. It just came back on with And then it came back on, and then we're like, that's so weird. And you never use that controller again? So, so, uh, I forgot exactly what happened. I think, I think somebody had looked it up. Happened again? I think somebody had looked it up. I think somebody said, take out everything. Take out the memory cards, controllers, everything. Take it all out. So that's what we did. We took it all out. Yeah, because we, we had access to early internet. Back early dial-up internet. Dial-up, that's dial-up. right. See, we were we were like a di- dial-up. We were advanced, but not super advanced with our dial-up. There were, dude, they had forums out there with people who yeah. had questions like that. So that's and, and good. Somebody was like, and somebody said, unplug everything for the GameCube, and they said, then plug the power back in, and then turn it on, and then if it turns on, plug the video cable back in. Uh, if that stays on, good. Plug in the controller. And just, it's basically just trial and error. And then we finally plugged in the Mad Catch controller and it'll go. Is that Mad Catch? I wonder why that's. Hey, See, I had, two, I, t- I had two third party controllers. I had that blue one. Yeah. And I had that orange one. You gave me them and they both broke in. Yeah, I gave them to you because I, I didn't want them. Because they were broken. <laughs> well, they, yeah, they're. Well, you know what happened to a lot of my controllers was. They got hot in the attic. Well, my mom decided to put a lot of that stuff in the attic. And yeah. then when it got really hot, a lot of those rubbers and plastics. Because of the Louisiana heat yep. and our horrible non-insulated attics, uh, it got—I mean, it got yeah. multiple, like almost like 200 degrees up there, yeah. and just—I mean, I think over 200 degrees. It got really hot. That uh, that blue one, and they would melt. You gave you gave them both to me. You gave me the blue one and the orange one. The blue one just didn't work. The orange one, you plug it in, it vibrates perpetually. All all my PS2 controllers. The entire time just there. Yeah, all my PS2 <laughs> controllers my mom put in the attic and they all got ruined. But these have rumbles in it, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's right here in this in this fat part on the bottom. <laughs> the um <laughs> yeah, they had the built in rumble. They had that's something they upgraded from the sixty four. Yeah. And um, the rumble pack before. And then I put on here, is there any games for the GameCube that you wanted to play but you didn't? I guess your answer would be a Thousand Year Door. A thousand Year Door, absolutely. Uh, I'm eventually gonna look I'm gonna get brave and I'm gonna find a legal way to procure it. <laughs> and I'm gonna um, and I'm gonna play it. I think mine would be. Uh, I just never, I never got to, um, I never got to play Eternal Darkness before. Yeah, that, that one's on my list too. Uh, I just never had access to it. That one's on my list too. Uh, also, I, I wrote down some other games. Well, well we did were I, I didn't young. Say, uh, I didn't say Beyond Good and Evil, did I? I did. No, you didn't. Oh, anyway, I'm not kicking. Oh, that was on there. Um, but yeah. Uh, it, it's just we're, uh, we're not running the super thing long, about right? the thing about Eternal Darkness for us is that I think at the time we were too young to play it. Yeah, it, and, it, it didn't have the most interesting box yeah. art, and it was one of those things where like I didn't I didn't recognize it. I didn't want to chance it on a rental, so I probably didn't get it. They really didn't advertise a lot of a lot of M rated games back in the day, from what I can remember. Like they didn't advertise no, it as well as no, they, they did as they do nowadays. I mean they put an M rated game on there and slap some breasts on there and be like <laughs> commercial. I uh. I didn't really nice. talk about my, my GameCube origins. I remember I got my GameCube for Christmas. I don't know what Christmas it was. It wasn't so the you're launch. Such a, you're such a good little boy. It, it wasn't. It wasn't the launch it year. It wasn't the launch year. It must, have been, like, it must have been 2002. Yeah, 2002 uh, or three maybe. Two, when did the, y'all move? Probably the Christmas of 2002. Yeah. I got it. Like going into 2003. When did y'all move? Uh, Four or five. I moved whenever I was in. You moved the was, same year. I was going. Four, I was going from sixth grade to seventh grade. Four Swords Adventures came out that year. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait. Let's, let's do some math. The quick math. Quick math. Two thousand one. I was in fourth grade. Correct. So two thousand two. I would have been in fifth grade. Right. Two thousand three. I've been sixth grade. Two thousand four. I would have moved in two thousand. 2004. 2003, 2004, something it, like that. It is 2004 when you moved because I got um, I got Four Swords Adventures right after it came out for my birthday, uh, and y'all moved on my birthday. That's right. Man, that was... Talk about the most traumatic... I, I talk about it to this day, and I don't want to spur off on a, on, a, on a weird personal note, but that was one of the most traumatic experiences, li- like moving and living up there for a while. It sucked. That, uh, that has affected my... my like actual being to this day, mm-hmm. I talk about it all the time. Maybe some other time I'll do like a Calum personal, is not a, fun a personal video on it. But it, it, there's a lot to unpack with. Yeah, it. And I'm, I'm actually I want to talk about it just a little bit. Yes. But anyway, uh, so yeah, you got to because of game. You you really really so bonded with the game. I did. I uh, so I got the GameCube on that Christmas, and I remember I was grounded for something. <laughs> I came around. It was good little boy. It was something stupid. My parents they punished me for like. 
until further notice, essentially. Yeah, pretty much. I couldn't play... I I couldn't, mean, no this, video games. So what was the story behind it? They forgot to tell you you were unpunished, or... They, no, they just, I was punished for so long, they just forgot. Okay, that's what happened? Okay. So I, I was punished from playing video games. No video games. You probably cursed your brother out And then, I, I probably, and I, uh, I, I remember I wanted a GameCube for Christmas. I, I got the GameCube for Christmas. Now, I think this was, uh, you know, post-Brandon finding out about Santa Claus, so there was no, like, you know, uh, traditional... Christmas, you know, it was just like, hey, here's your presents. Vincent's in the room. <laughs> here's your presents, and I, um, uh, I remember getting it. My mom was like, "Why aren't you playing your your game?" And I was like, "I'm punished. I'm grounded. I can't play it." And she was like, "Oh, really?" And I was like, "Yeah." She's like, "Yo, you're ungrounded. You can play it." And I was like, "You tell me I could have been playing games this whole time? I was punished for like months, yeah. months, dude." I don't, I, I don't think they intended to punish you for that long. I don't they think they, to tell I, you. I think they, I think they just forgot that I was punished. But anyway, um. I, rem- I I used to I used to think it was so funny when you were punished. You'd be like, "Can't come to my house." I was like, "Why?" He's like, "I'm punished." I'd be like, "Your parents said you punished for me." My mama don't and know. You're, I'm like, you're like, you're like, you're like, you're like, no, uh, you could come over. We just can't play games. And so there was one time I went over and he like, Steve, play this game for me. I remember one time my mom was like, "You better not be playing video games over there." I was like, "I'm not." And so we were. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's better than doing drugs, right? I, know, right? Like, I mean, I was. I, I think it's so funny when parents try to punish their kid, like forever no matter where you are like like if my kids punish you can't play video games i don't want him to play video games at his friend's house i'm not gonna let him go to his friend's house. right right <laughs> of course I, I mean i'm not gonna punish I, I, I can't get over the fact that you're punished for so long and they're like we didn't unpunish you i did i just forgot because I mean, honestly i think it was something really stupid yeah. really petty that i think i just i think i wrote something or i drew something on a piece of paper as like me shooting brent or something and <laughs> I mean, I, it's, I'm not saying that's what it was. It's yeah. probably something stupid like that. Yeah. And I just crumpled it up and threw it away. My parents were like, what was that? And I was like, oh, nothing. I, I just was done with it. And they opened it up and saw it. And they saw that I, I didn't lie. I, I mean, just, you might have. You might. I, I didn't lie. I just didn't tell the truth. And they're like, okay, yeah. you, you can't play any video I feel like I, mean, I feel like you were you were punished. Not a lot, but there was a lot of times where we go, where I'd go over there and you'd punish. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, I, I, had, I had anger. The problem management. is your brother would push your buttons and you get yeah. mad. And I got, had, and, get and they do it on purpose. I had anger management problems, and yeah. it's probably something that's affected me to this day. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but uh, I wrote down here that the, the GameCube Nintendo GameCube was my, uh, the GCN, was my very own console. That was my first. Yeah, that was your first My console. console. I mean, I had the Super Nintendo because when, yeah. when Brad, my oldest that brother, Brad, when it? Brad got the PS1, he was like, well, I'm done with this. And I'm he, too cool for I this. would get scraps, right? Yeah. But the GameCube was my first very own current generation console. And the Nintendo 64 was Brent's. And the Nintendo 64 was Brent's. And it wasn't mine. Just like... Because I put here, I said Brent had the Nintendo 64 and the Super yeah. Nintendo was a relic that only I played anyway. Yeah. Um, and then just like in true Brent fashion, he sold his console when he got tired of it. And I put here, um, whenever I moved to Washita Parish, um, you know, it, it was, um, it's all I had until Washita the Wii. Washita, emphasis on the sh. Uh, other, other than the uh, than the Super Nintendo. I mean, Brad had, I mean, we had our PS2, mm-hmm. but you know, that Brent would play the PS2. Um, y'all, y'all put, y'all all three put in for the PS2, right? Yeah, we did. Okay, but so I mean, at, at some point, system. it wasn't until the PS3 that came out that Brad really wasn't interested in video games as much anymore. Uh, so until then, I was just playing my GameCube, yeah. and um, I I played it every 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 day, dude. Yeah. I remember. Here's the sad part, right? Here's get your violins ready. I remember the day that we moved, right? Mm. L- listen how painful this is. I remember we moved on your birthday, right? Yeah, and y'all came. I remember you were like begging that we stay so we could play Four Swords Avengers. All right. And I wanted to play it so bad. Yeah. And I remember my mom was like, "I'm sorry, you know." We, we got go. it. We got to go. Everything's packed. Like the house is empty. I'm, I'm so stupid thinking we, like we, maybe I could convince them to stay for a little longer. We locked it up, and I remember I just I remember like crying. I got in the van and cried because oh, I, shoot, I, man, I I wanted to I wanted to play Four Swords Adventure. I didn't want to leave. Dang. I didn't know. How, I was like, okay, you know, it's okay. I'm, you know, we got up there. We got to the house, right? And then I remember being in an empty house. Yeah. Now I think my dad and Brent left to go get like. I don't know where they went. Mm-hmm. I can't remember. But they were gone, right? And I remember Brad left to go to Natchitoches to see his girlfriend at the time. And I think it was just me and my mom there. And I think I think Britton, uh, my dad, went to go, like, get food or, or something. But they were gone for a long time. Mm-hmm. I remember being in an empty house. And it hit me that this was it, right? I was like, 
this is my new life. I don't I don't have any friends. I walked outside. I lived on a single street. Yeah. There was nowhere to go. There was it was a main highway and a single street that was a cul-de-sac. There's nowhere for me to go. I mean, I could ride my bicycle around, but it was hot outside. It was Louisiana, right? Yeah. And I remember, I remember, um, I, I went, I, I sat in my closet, the same closet that you hid in. Yeah, I remember that. Nothing in the room. I don't know where my mom was. She was probably doing the same thing. Yeah. I remember I was sitting in the closet and I was just crying. Dang. I just sat there and cried. I didn't know that. I just sat there and cried. And I didn't Man, know. Man, that I didn't hurts. Know, I didn't know what to do. I yeah. didn't know what to do. And so, you know what I did? I had our little CRT yep. TV. That uh, that Sanyo uh, CRT. That was Brent's, wasn't it? That little tiny one. Not the tiny. Not oh, the, not the tiny one. Maybe it was the teeny tiny one. Was it the tiny one, or the, was the, it the one with the missing button? The teeny. No, it wasn't that the one. Shock we, this. We, we, th- we ended up throwing that one away when we moved. We probably um, should have thrown it away before. The small one was an Orion. Yeah. I think it was that one. That teeny. Yeah, yeah it was. Because that's what y'all used I, to it play. Was, in it the, was in because the, in the van. because our TVs were in the U-Haul. Yeah. And and we had the TV in the van. Because you played it on the way up there, right? We did. We did. So we had. So I remember I took it out of there. And I remember I sat in this empty room in an empty house. That's depressing. Only thing plugged in was the oh, CRT man. and then my GameCube and Super Smash Bros. Melee. Oh, man, and man. I, I, sad. I sat there for days hey, that's in when, an empty room. And I just played. And that's probably why I'm so good at Smash Bros. That's when, dude, dude. But I play every day. I would let just, me tell you something. I would turn it on. Moving to Calhoun sucked. But, like, you went... Beyond levels that I could have ever imagined on Smash Bros. Like, look, let me when I would you, ever, sit there. you ever hear the, the you know the the student has surpassed the master? Let me tell you something. Before you moved, I would kick Brandon's butt at Smash all the time. I don't think there was a time I can't remember when there was a time that you actually beat me at Smash. And then you moved up to Calhoun, and I played you for the first time since you moved, and I was like, I remember what? Uh, <laughs> I I just remember sitting there. I would play it, and I would um nonstop. I, I would I would delete my data just so I could unlock the characters wow. again. And I remember um, the sadist over here. And I would wait. I had nothing to do. Yeah. I had literally nothing. And I remember playing against level nines, and yeah. just, that's all I would do was just play against level nines. I would oh, do man. all the events. Yeah. And I would delete them and do them all over again. I love them events. And man. um, but we're, we're, we're gonna find an emulator. We're, we're gonna talk about Smash. We're yeah. Gonna talk about Smash. But I remember the reason that the GameCube is so special to me is because of that moment, because of moments like that. And I remember. The trade-off to living up there, being so miserable, is that you know my dad's job was so good that we had really good Christmases. Yeah. And I remember getting so, a lot of those GameCube games you see over there, like Paper Mario. Th- I would get them all on the same Christmas. Yeah. Like I remember getting like five GameCube games on the same Christmas, which was unheard of for me back in the day. It was yeah. like maybe got one game, maybe yeah. two, and a bunch of toys and stocking stuffers. Exactly. Um, like, whenever I got my GameCube for that Christmas, it was just the bundle that came with Melee, and that's all I got was the console with Melee, right? Yeah. Um, and that's how I know it was a, um, an aftermarket bundle because Smash wasn't out. It wasn't launch title yet. Uh, but I remember playing that GameCube every single day. I, that's all I would play. And then, I mean, I would play my PS2 as well because, you know, eventually Brent, Brent kind of grew out of playing video games. So at that point, everything was mine. You know, the PS2 was mine. Yeah. GameCube was mine, and then, you know, by the time 2006, Brent, you became the game master. Or honestly, man, it's all day. I would go. Yeah, off. I mean, I would. I only had a couple friends. Yeah, any friends in Calhoun? Uh, I mean, just Tyler and my friend Corey. Yeah, and it's the only friends I had up there, really. And it was because of video games. It was because of um, playing games and, and talking with them about it. Yeah. Um, you know, video games uh, are, are really special to me, not just because I enjoy them, but yeah. because of the impact that they had on my life. I've been thinking about writing a video essay for It's that. so funny, too, because, man, I remember being in Homa. Y'all used to pick on me because I'd come over and I'd be like, let's play some games. And y'all be like, is that all you do is play games? And then uh, that, I think that may have been more Brent. That was Brent. Than me. But Brent was influential on you well, sometimes, Well, yeah, well, he, made, he would make, you know, he'd make me feel bad for playing games all the time. But it was all right. He used to make me He used to make me join in on the hornless stuff. That's uh, how it yeah, started. Yeah, yeah, Brent was a eventually, peer, Brent's event, a peer pressure. To uh, eventually, day. Stockholm Syndrome uh, takes hold and you just kind of go with it. Yeah, Brent's the peer pressure master. Oh, yeah. He still gets uh, me to this day, probably. Yeah, yeah, he does. He definitely does. Uh <laughs> No, but uh, it went, after 2006 came around, and you know, the, you know, a lot of those new generation consoles were coming yeah. out. Um, you know, that's whenever the old GameCube. I still had it, yeah. but I had the Wii, and I actually would play a lot of my games backwards compatible. Yeah. On the Wii, and so I, I would still play GameCube games on my Wii. They um, really need to 
come out with some way to keep playing these GameCube games. Because, I mean, there's so many treasures out there that are just lost to time right now. I mean, if they came yeah. out with Virtual Console for, for GameCube... Well, I mean, I'm not trying to be um, promoting things I shouldn't be promoting, but, I mean, emulating is the only way to play these GameCube games in that fashion, Well, right? there's nothing wrong with being factual, you know, because I kind of want Nintendo to know like, that the only way that we can play these games right now is let's emulation. Say, let's say you're a young man who didn't live through the same years that we lived through, right? And you didn't... Yeah, like you're Seth. You were, yeah, you, like, yeah, well, Seth had a GameCube, but, like, even... Oh, yeah, that's true, he did. Even, even younger than him, like, let's say, you know, you're 18 years old, yeah. like my, my little cousin Max, right? Mm -hmm. He wasn't even alive when... Well, I mean, he, he was a toddler, and I was playing my GameCube, right? Yeah, and you were making him flip the bird off. Well, I was making him play <laughs> Resident Evil 4. Uh, it's, that's a story for the day. Oh yeah, uh, but um, no, I, you know he he didn't have the chance to be an adult with money to buy these things. Yeah, exactly, and, and unless he goes and finds them in a thrift shop or on eBay or or something like that, he has no official way of playing these. Exactly, things. you know he can play Sunshine now because they re released it on Switch. Um, but all these other games that we no, just, we can't just, because they murdered Mario. <laughs> well, yeah, well, we just talked about all these games, mm -hmm. and you can't play them unless you have a GameCube. You know. Balls in your court, Nintendo. Right. Uh, so sorry to end up end on such Nintendo, a solid note. Nintendo said lawsuit. You said court. Are we going to court? <laughs> but <laughs> we'll bring you to court. But I just wanted to take this episode to honor the GameCube because it has a very special place in my heart. It deserves the honor. It really does. I played this thing. I mean, it was there for me when I had nothing else. Yeah. Literally. If I. Uh... If I had to pick one thing to say about, not one thing is in one word, but if I had to pick one way to describe the GameCube, it would be criminally underrated. Absolutely. I mean, criminally. We, criminally just, we just named a million reasons why. And I know a lot of people are going to be like, oh, well, that's just, ah, you can play best of games on PS2, but you know what you couldn't play on PS2? Mario Kart Double Dash. That's Super right. Mario Sunshine. That's right. Wind Waker. Luigi's Mansion. Luigi's Mansion. Metroid Prime. F Zero. That's Resident right. Evil Remake. All those, all those games, man. man. All, all you can only play them on the GameCube. The GameCube, and a lot of those games. On I think here, maybe marketing had something to do with it. Yeah. I, I think that the controller had a little bit to do with it, not much, uh, but also at that time, you know, a lot of people were like, "I'm not, it, I'm, I'm not playing that kids console. It's a kids console." Exactly. And then the Xbox, you know, was the most powerful one on the market, and it still didn't outshine the PS2. Mm -hmm. um, it was too expensive. PlayStation was really good, and, and this is this is really why the PlayStation dominated that market. It was afford it was more affordable than the Xbox, and it had a bigger variety than the game. It had games. the sports games. It had all the sports games. It had, you know, at the time, I think the PS2 even came out before the game. Came. Yeah. It had a head start on it. Um, when did it come out? It came out in 2000 or 2001. Uh, I don't know. Look that up for me real quick. Um, but also, I think marketing has a, a big yeah part that to do with it. Uh, but also, think about the Western audience versus the Eastern. The GameCube probably did really well in Japan, but here in America, it probably didn't do as much because it's probably more of a kids console. 2000. It came out in so, October. Of oh, they, they had a year head start. They had a whole year head. Start. Had a whole year head. It felt start. like it felt like it had like. Two years. To and it had a whole year head start, yeah. and uh, you know the controller was you know more is more of a gamer's a gamer's console than it yeah. was you know a kid's console, and the poor GameCube just was too late. Um, it's it's it, you know the thing about that is is that it's just you know you want to be able to you know I mean Nintendo a lot of Nintendo's target audience grew up, and so yeah. What happens when kids grow up is that sometimes they tend to grab a, gravitate a little farther away from the cute. Yeah, and see, I so. was the generation. I'm like a generation behind on the people who like grew up with the NES. So mm -hmm. by the time that they were, you know, the age, whatever age they were when the GameCube mm -hmm. came out, they probably were more interested in what the PS2 had to offer. Yeah, exactly. And if you already bought a PS2 a year before the GameCube why came out, why would you need the GameCube? Why would you need it? Because exactly. you got your DVD player, you got your game console, mm -hmm. you got all these games and. Yeah. All the ports are going to be better on the PS2 exactly. anyway. That's why it didn't do as well. Exactly. But, I mean, it's not like it was a failure. And like the, the DVD Wii U. thing too. It's not a failure at all. Like like the Wii U, it, the Wii U was a literal commercial, commercial failure. failure. Exactly. The GameCube was not, to my knowledge. And the Wii U failed primarily for, for marketing reasons. The marketing was awful. Marketing, the marketing was and, so bad. And it just 
people didn't know how to develop for exactly. it. Exactly. And so I think that... But if you want to play Metroid games, let me tell you. Yeah. That's the place to be. Honestly, the only thing that my Wii U does now is play Zelda, Wind Waker, and... Uh... You know, mine's in a box. and it's, it's back in its factory box in my closet. I mean, mine would be if it, if it wasn't my only way to play and Wind I Waker thought about, and Twilight Princess. I thought about whipping it out just to go buy all those Game Boy Advance games so I have a place to play them. It's not a bad idea. Uh, but Honestly, mine's just going to be a, a, a nicer version because, I mean, most... It's just a pain in the butt to have it yeah. up because you gotta have the motion sensor. But, I would um, keep this thing. I, I would keep my GameCube if I if I if I could find it. I would retire my Wii and I would pull that thing out, dude. That can I tell you? I I, I mean I hook up the Wii because it it, it's, it it's operates a, it yeah. operates a little bit better. Yeah. But I hook up the GameCube from time to time now just just to play yeah, Def dude. Jam, play Def Jam, and I play Mario Kart. I mean I would I used to do it for Sunshine. Yeah. Every now and again when I want to play Mario Sunshine, I'd hook up my GameCube. No matter what what year it was, I, I'd play it. Let me tell you something. Um, I guarantee you, more people are digging up their old GameCubes. They're going to find GameCubes wherever they can find them and playing them right now than they are their PS2s and their Xboxes. Now, some people might say, "Well, you know, the Xbox One S or whatever the whatever the hell they call it nowadays." <laughs> um, it's backwards compatible, so I can play my Xbox One game or original or Xbox. original Xbox. God, freaking Xbox. Why are you they're, 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 stupid? Look, 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 I don't want to hate no, I'm on... I'm sorry, Xbox Series X. I don't want to hate on Xbox because I do appreciate what they're doing. I but, do. uh, uh, man, they, they got to learn how to name their consoles better. I know, I'm, I'm sitting here thinking Xbox One, like the first Xbox, and they're like, no, it's that's really the bad. third it's one. It's really bad. But, 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 I mean, in all honesty, they're like, the only games that I can think of right now that people are going to pull out their Xbox 4 is Halo 1 or Halo 2. Yeah, but, I mean, if you're if you're a real OG, you, you know what games you want to play. But it's on, and then and like then, Crimson Skies, exactly. and uh, I mean, I have Conquer's Bad Fur Day over there. I like to pop the, yeah, the old Xbox every now and again. But I usually just fire that up on my old 360. Yeah, and so what I'm saying is, though, the point that I'm trying to make is, is that you know people are scrounging for GameCube so they can play Melee, so they can play Double Dash. So they could play Rogue they're, Squadron. They're good, too. man. You know, I mean, it's just it seems to I me think... like people appreciated the GameCube more after that generation. I, I think the party games are what really yes. have stood that With are stood timeless. The they're, yeah, they're timeless classics because, yeah. like, I mean, they just put out a Monkey Ball game, and it looks like the GameCube game, right? Uh, they just put out a WarioWare game, or they're putting out a WarioWare game. And that was a GameCube game. Like that last Nintendo Direct we got, it was almost like they were like, "Hey, we're bringing back like some of these GameCube style things." And I think there's a reason why is because those were the games that were the most fun. Um, but anyway, yeah. yeah, you have anything else you want to talk about, Steve? With um, the GameCube? Here's uh, no, just as much as I love. It's 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 a it is a fantastic piece of equipment. And I really want to play some of the games that I used to play. The good thing is, is that they've ported some of them, like Twilight Princess and Wind Waker. That's all been ported onto the Wii U, like HD. But like, yeah. you know, I want a way to play Melee again because I love the Melee. You know, and I'm not, I'm not the traditionalist Smash Bros. snob where it's like Melee or nothing. Uh, I can't believe you played this casual trash <laughs> Ultimate. But it's like, um, have you gone back and played Melee anytime recently? I have not. <laughs> It doesn't feel as good as you think it, it does. It doesn't feel... I, I agree. I don't think it feels as good as Ultimate. And I know, you know, if any any, it's sn- a, any, any Smash snobs are listening, they're going to drag me for it. But the reality is, is that... Um, but but in all honesty, it's still played fun. It's well, people fun like it because it's broken. That's why they like it. They like it. They that like... Way. I mean, I don't understand. It's like everybody... Oh, so you like playing Jigglypuff or Fox or Captain Falcon and literally nobody else? Yeah, well, they, they, there's a reason they like to play those those characters. I mean, and, the and thing I love about Ultimate is is that they're constantly trying to balance everything. It's, it's a yeah, well, it's a that's the thing about GameCube. It didn't have internet, so you, there was no update patches. There's no hard drive in there to save any of that stuff. Yeah. When these games came out, they came out. Boy, um, I love playing Fox every time. <laughs> hey, we'll have to fire up uh, and play some Melee. But I do want to play some like I, I do want to play some of the games that I didn't get to play. Yeah, you gotta play Thousand Year Door, man. I gotta play that one. I, gotta really, play, I wanna play Eternal Darkness. I wanna play Thousand Year Door. You really gotta play uh, uh, Thousand Year Door, man. I think yeah, that's a really good game. Man, that is but a good hey, game. what are your memories of the GameCube? Did we do a good job covering it? What games didn't we talk about? Or what do you wanna say? If you wanna say anything, Little Jolly Gamer Show at gmail.com. Thank you so much for joining me, Steve, on this episode. Of course. It's a really Thanks good for th- having me. Like, I'm, I'm trying not to let it go any longer. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, let's wait. Let's wait. We got eight minutes. We can go two. Uh, but two hours. I knew this was going to be a long episode because the GameCube is so special to us, and now you know why. Um, thanks so much for listening. Share this podcast with your friends and family. If this is on your RSS feed, subscribe and help me out, man. Share with everyone. If I can get if I can get one of these shows to have one thousand listens on it, I will poop my pants on um, air. On air. Okay, but. Don't really do that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thanks so much for listening. We'll see yeah. you on the next episode of Gamer Tales or Little Jolly Gamer Show if you listen to that. Bye. Bye. See you later.